All play, all day. From Television City in Hollywood, this is the new $25,000 Pyramid. Today's special guest, from Hill Street Blues, Barbara Bosson. And from Archie Bunker's place, Barry Gordon. Your host is Dick Clark. Thank you very much, Jack Clark. Welcome once again to the brand new $25,000 Pyramid. And we have barely recovered from yesterday. Uh, Barbara, you didn't get into the... Uh, if you weren't with us, uh, we had a close call. It was incredible. Yes, I'm still well, excited. You should be lifted up by a man who is well over six feet tall, <laughs> along with his wife. And uh, how are you, Barry? Did you survive? A little bruised rib. I think I'm going to be fine. <laughs> well, no, for anybody who might not have been with us, we had a very major $25,000 win yesterday. And uh, the lady's husband rushed on stage, proceeded to pick her up and Mr. Gordon and anything else that was in sight <laughs> off the ground like this. It was a lot of fun. I, I, I hope we have as good luck today. David Corson, what do you do, sir? I'm a theology student at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena. And while I'm going through school, I'm working as an optician. You have a double career working. Right now, right. David, much good luck to you and to Barbara. You're in good hands there. Barry, you've recovered enough so I can oh, turn you over to another victim here. Uh, Mary Henry, what do you do, please? I'm a housewife, and I have two young boys, uh, Sean Four and Rory, who's eight months old. You've got a real young one there. We wish yes. you good luck here and good luck with the family. Let me quickly explain how this I thing really operates. Know. Same thing can happen again today. We can have another $25,000 winner. I should say the loser yesterday, quote, unquote, left with about 12000 and some dollars and a trip to Hawaii and a stereo thing. So it was a big day here. Over in this winner's circle, if you go there the first time, you win, uh, you try, I should say, to win $10,000. The second time in, it's worth $25,000. And you do it by playing these subjects over here. And they are, laugh a minute, play it again, Sam, too close for comfort. It's a woman's world, a ghost town. I owe you my life. And we'll start from left to right with Barbara taking the first pick. Okay, uh, too close for comfort. Okay, describe for your partner these things that are uncomfortable. Things that are uncomfortable. Ready? Go. Um, you wear it around your neck. Collar, this. tie, necktie. Uh, a piece of wood that gets into your Splitter. finger. Uh, you put it in your shirt. It's in your collar. It sticks. A stay, it's uh, a, starch. What's your, right. Uh, it's a, it's a pain. It's a, uh, it hurts. A hurt, a bruise. Uh, it, um, um, uh, pass. Um, not cold, but... Hot. He, uh, uh, he, heat. Right, right. Oh, it's a, it's a little bed you sleep on in the a army. Cot. Um, a cold wind that a chill, blows a wind. across. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, folks. You got stuck on draft at the end. All right, you folks picked up five out of seven points now. We still have some subjects over here for you, Barry. What would you like? We'll take It's a Woman's World. All right. Describe for your partner these terms applied to a woman. For example, a woman who is well-bred is a lady. These are terms applied to a woman. Ready? Go. Uh, not a king, but a... Queen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a woman who hasn't had any sex. A virgin. Right. <laughs> uh, not a husband, but... A, a wife. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a Mexican lady would be called a... Senorita. Yes. Senora. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a woman who, who gets at you all the time. And a nag, man, a nag, right. a nag. Uh, a woman who lost her husband, whose husband a passed widow. away. Yes. Uh, a, a woman's liver is a, uh, uh, another word for that. Not masculine, but... Feminist. Right. Very good. Good, good. Good, good. Dynamite, too. I mean, short length of time. He took you not masculine, but right into it. Lovely clue. Seven to five. David, what would you like? I'd like a ghost town, please. All right. Describe these things associated with ghosts. Things associated with ghosts. Ready? Go. Okay, the holiday, October 31st. Halloween. Mm-hmm. Uh, the friendly ghost. Uh, the uh, cartoon character. He Casper. Mm -hmm. uh, where people are buried. Uh, in a graveyard. No, but another Cemetery. word for that. Uh, what you are, the holy... Ghost. But, okay, but another word for ghost is a ethereal... Spirit. Right. Uh, then when you bring somebody back and try to get in touch with them, you have a... Uh, a seance. Right. Uh, and then, oh, oh uh, that noise. What is that noise a I'm groan. making? Uh, what, Moan. Like that, right. One more. Oh, and then the... David, that's a no-no. No, I'm sorry. 
don't uh, don't feel too badly about it. There really wasn't enough time to get it, but you must stay with that screen on your little set there in case another word pops up. In any case, you picked up 11 points. It's 11 to 7. And Mary, what would you like? We're going to try a laugh a minute. Okay. You are to describe these. Barry doesn't know anything about this subject. <laughs> These are things in a situation comedy. Oh. Ah. Describe these things in a situation comedy. Ready? Go. Uh, this is Henry Winkler on uh, Happy Days. Uh huh. Uh, this is the guy who tells you what to do at work. He's the uh, the boss. Uh huh. This is uh, the guy who's on Odd Couple now. He's uh, on Tony uh, Randall. Right. Right. This is the guy with Alan Alda plays his character. Uh, 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 Hawkeye. Right. Uh, this is the guy a custodian. Another name for custodian. Janitor. Right. You got it. Uh, this is the guy who's on Taxi. Uh, Judd Hirsch. You, uh huh. That's right. And this is the guy who takes care of a doctor that takes care of animals. A veterinarian. Yes. That's got it. Good yeah. score. It just occurred to me there may be somebody, some, some lost person living in a cave doesn't know he's on Archie Bunker's place every week and I'm saying these terrible things about it. Uh, let me see where we are. We have two subjects left. The score is 14 to 11. That means, David, it's your choice. Play it again, Sam. All right. And do you want to give a receipt? I'll sir? give. Please describe for your partner these things people play. Things people play. Ready? Go. Okay. You, uh, not even, but... Odd. Mm -hmm. uh, you play this game with pawns and rooks uh, and... Chess. Uh, a trumpet, type of trumpet you play uh, regularly with it. Uh, a type of thing with boardwalk and all uh, these other things on it. Monopoly. Right. Uh, then not an eight track, but a, uh, a type a cassette. of. Cassette. Right. Uh, you play five card stud, it's a type of. Poker. Mm -hmm. And then you drop money in this, plays music. Uh, and that's, uh, jukebox. Right. That's it, folks. Got them all. Mary, would you like to give a receive on this go round? Barry's on you. You need 19 points. Five out of the seven will turn the trick. If you get it, you'll go over and try to win that $10,000. Barry, describe for the lady these things that can save a life. Things that can save a life. They need 19. Ready? Go. Uh, when you fall out of an airplane, you pull parachute, the ripcord. Parachute. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes off uh, from your clock and it lights you up. Mm -hmm. uh, the blood, it gives you fresh Transfusion. blood. Transfusion. Mm -hmm. You're not guilty. You're, you're innocent. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is where you put a little baby in or chicks. In an uh, incubator. Mm -hmm. That's got it. That's a winning point. 19 does it. Mary, let's go and try and win $10,000. To the winner, sir. Most outrageous show in the history of television. The Gong Show. Only on Game Show Network. Uh, uh, Well, it's the new $25,000 pyramid, and this is sort of a new shake to the game. We come into the circle the first time you try for $10,000. If you win this time, you've got your 10, you're just happy as a goat, run over there and play again. And if you win, you come back the second time and try for 25. This time, we're at the $10,000 level. Barry, you got this thing all down pat. I don't have to tell you anything. Just concentrate on one another, and I'll remind you about the hands. Don't use them. Okay. Here is your first subject. Go. Uh, Liverpool, London. Things in England. Uh, mm -hmm. Murder, robbery, Crime. embezzlement. What's up, Doc? Alan the Pussycat. Uh, a Star Barbara is Tri Born. Movie. Right. Words. Definitions. Things in the dictionary. Mm. The Eiffel Tower. Things the in Statue Paris. of Liberty. Uh, Niagara Falls. Monument. The White House. Disneyland. Amusement places. Uh, Things. Disney World. Attractions. Right. Uh, your honey, a lemon, a melon. Things that uh, are sweet. Kleenex, toilet paper. Things that are soft. Toilet tissue. Things that lemons, are... Uh, lemons. Oranges. Things to squeeze. Yes! Oh, now, that means, as I predicted over here inadvertently, that you won $10,000, but that's not the end of it. Next time you'll partner with Barbara, if you win that round, you'll come back and try for $25,000. Good game. We'll be back with the new $25,000 pyramid in just a minute.
And away we go once again with the new $25,000 pyramid. Uh, Barbara, what's the difference between uh, playing this game and going to work every day on Hill Street Blues? <laughs> I mean, you can't ad lib here. I mean, you've got to just play this game. Do you get any opportunity to do anything but read the words over there? They give uh, no, no. We, we have to say what's in the script. I, sometimes I ask to change it, uh, but I, it has to be cleared. How long does it take to do one of those hour shows? We have seven shooting days per episode. Well, it's actually more than a five-day work week. Oh, yes. So you're always a little yeah. behind. Then. Yeah. It, we, we could use eight, but we do it in seven. Well, it's a magnificent show. There's no wonder it's won so many Emmys. Our congratulations oh, thank again you. to you and your colleagues. Mary Henry, you've not done badly here. You yeah. picked up 10,000 bucks. Ready to go again? Sure mm -hmm. am. I As love it. I mentioned again. before, if you win this round, you try for 25,000. Barry, your spirit's still soaring high? Oh, yeah. All right. David, you shouldn't be discouraged. All you can do is win this one, and you'll go over there and try for the 10,000. Hopefully, uh, for you, in your case, we'll hope it's a tie that you'll both come back and play again tomorrow. But the high score wins the opportunity to come back the next day. Here are the subjects. We have It's Outdated, The Moon in June, Who's Who, Gone for Good, The City Dump, The Mystery 7, again, of, uh, just for anybody who hasn't joined us on the new version of the $25,000 pyramid. All of those things have something in common. We don't tell you what they are. It makes it a little more difficult, and therefore we offer a prize if you want to take it. This time out, is we still got those 25 shares of Xerox stock. We have tried. Now, it's at today's closing price. It's worth approximately $1,000 on this day of taping. So uh, I leave you with that thought, gentlemen. Which one's it going to be? Like Mr. Seven. Now, you want to go for the stock. Mm. I talked you into it, huh? <laughs> Held that out in front of you like that? Uh. All right. Barry, you'll have 30 seconds. I'll tell you what they all have in common afterwards. Ready? Okay. Go. Uh, not tea, but uh, Coffee. Right. Uh, you make uh, cakes with it, Dole. Pillsbury, D gold Dole. medal. Flour. Mm -hmm. uh, you cut uh, this. Scissors. Right? Uh, a camera has this. It's one, one of your, Eyes. one of those. Eyes. One, no, Lens. that. Lens. Right. Uh, these. Hips. You're, right. A uh, kind of meat from a cow. Beef. It's, right. Uh, uh, st you stash it. It's leftovers. It's trash. Uh, it's uh, another word for trash. It's a big... Garbage. Mm -hmm. You got it. Things you grind, all of those things. Things uh, you grind, and you got you. yourself Thank 25 you. shares of stock. Congratulations and a seven-point win, ladies. What will it be, Barbara? Uh, the moon in June. All right. Please describe these things that rhyme. Things oh, oh. that rhyme. Ooh. Ready? Go. Uh, what you get on uh, February 14th? A Valentine heart. Um, it, it rhymes lines of a rhyming. Uh, 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 it, it, uh, a limerick. Uh, a poem. Right. Um, a uh, children's uh, poem. Uh, Mother Goose rhymes. Uh, rhymes. Um, Limerick's jokes, the, riddles. Little, little Jack Muffet. <laughs> um, uh, an advertisement. An a uh, commercial. Um, ad. Uh, uh, bells ringing. Um, Ding dong. Oh, ladies. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay. no. Gee, that was a tough break. I just, it just went down the drain with you there, and it was no, uh, it's not a commentary on how you play the game. You're both good game players. Nursery rhyme threw you into the lurch, and then by the time you didn't recover from that, you ran into jingle, and I think oh, your, your thinking process just sort of went badly there. We'll hope for a better next round. All right, David, what would you like? Oh, uh, we'd like the city dump. Uh, for you, we got it. <laughs> Describe these things in a junkyard. Uh, things in a okay. junkyard. Ready? Go. Okay, this is what you lay on in your a bed. bed. Oh, what is what? The, the uh, a mattress. Box, right. Uh, what you put food in to keep it cold. A refrigerator. Mm -hmm. uh, what you put a picture in. A frame. Okay. Uh, what you bathe in. A tub. Mm -hmm. uh, what you watch on television. This is a... Uh, a picture. What is, this is a... A screen. Mm -hmm. And then what you put on the edge of a car on the wheel, it's a uh, thing uh, that goes over the... No, oh, the hubcap. Right. And then a chest of drawers is a... A bureau. What is another word Dresser. for it? Dresser. Right. That's it. We have three subjects left here for the ladies. It's outdated. Who's who? Gone for good. We're Mary? Gonna, uh, we'll try. It's outdated. All right. Describe for your partner these things that are dated. Barbara, these are things that are dated. Ready? Go. This is uh, what you write out. A, a personal... Uh-huh. This is not a uh, penny nickel, but the next one. Dime. Uh-huh. This is what you get when you graduate from high school. You, uh, you receive you a... Uh, your diploma. Uh-huh. This is uh, what you sign when you're an actor. You sign your... Uh, contract. Right. Uh, this is when you celebrate, you've been married 10 years, you celebrate your anniversary. Yes. And this is uh, what we celebrate, our Independence Day is the, uh, not the 3rd, but the 4th of July. Right. 
This is what you use a plastic thing to buy things at the department stores. You use your uh, the credit card. Right. All right. Mary, the strategy here and the hope that you have with a score of 14 to 9 is that you can get all of one of these and they run into just awful luck. Because <laughs> at the moment, they have a terrific they advantage. They have a heart yeah. attack. Yeah, I mean, maybe one of them will leave for the day or something like that. Which one would you like, please? We're going to go for gone for good, and I'll get All right. Uh, to keep it exciting, we'll hope that you get them all and put the pressure on those guys. Describe these things that people give up or abandon. These are things that people give up or abandon. Ready, go. Uh, this is when you count your calories, you're on a, a diet. Yes. Uh, this is when you go to university, another word for university is? Is a college. Right. This is a little baby dog is a, a puppy. Right. Uh, this is when you ha collect stamps or you, uh, uh, do you have trains? It's your uh, hobby. Right. Uh, this is uh, another nerd, uh, word for a boat is a, a ship, right? Uh, this is what you choose to do for your life. Your, your uh, occupation is your uh, job. You have a great... Um, uh, you're an actress. That's your... Uh, my, my occupation. Uh-huh. That's your occupation. And you have a... Oh. Mm. Right. This one looks too good. <laughs> oh, really? Mary, look at it this way. You've won $10,000 anyway. <laughs> about that. That's right. Now, uh, to really make this thing exciting, it would be uh, sort of interesting. I think it's reasonably certain that David's going to win this round. All he needs is a point. If he goes over there and he wins $10,000, I'm not sure Bob Stewart's going to be very happy to make this <laughs> the show, but you folks will have won $20,000, ended up in a tie, and David, you'll come back tomorrow, and Mary will come back tomorrow, but that's getting ahead of the game. You've got to get that one point. You want Barry to give? Yes. All right, Barry, you need a score of 15 points here. Describe, oh, this is really tough. Really, really tough. <laughs> Famous people. Oh. I don't know whether you know this first one, Barry. I don't know what your background is. <laughs> you may want to skip the first one. Are you ready? You're putting the pressure on. All okay. right, ready? Go. The father of our country. George Washington. Oh, <laughs> Big clip <laughs> Gentlemen, if I could ask of you a favor, if you'll just sort of tune into one another, drop out on me for a moment because I've got a little extra time. He ran short over there, and I would like to spread a word to my friend at home here. As you probably know, the new $25,000 pyramid is seen every uh, Monday through Friday right here. And the best thing that I can ask you to do is help us spread the word because there are probably some people who are busy with other things and maybe didn't hear that we're back. If you could help us spread the word, we'd be most appreciative. Because really what happens in the fall, all of the networks promote their prime time schedule. It's very important. And uh, those of us uh, here in daytime have to wait our turn. Well, we are waiting, and we're counting on you to help us. We thank you very much. Now, if you guys are ready, I've got my commercial out of the way. This guy has this down to a gnat's nose here. I mean, you're unbelievable. Tune into his thoughts. Get a picture of what he's saying. If you win that $10,000, it'll be a tie. You both will be back to compete again tomorrow. We wish you much good Thank luck. You. Concentrate now on each other. Here is your first subject. Go. A stethoscope. Things the doctor uses. Let's... Vanilla, tutti frutti, Touch chocolate. Ice cream. Ice cream. Cadillacs, Rolls Royces. The luxury cars. Diamonds. The luxurious things. Mm -hmm. Bulls, goats. Types of cows. Uh, cows. Things with horns. Mm hmm. Preposition, noun, verb, Parts of speech. Subject, uh, the object. Right. Your registration, a compact. Things you uh, keep in your purse. Tapes. Things you keep in your glove compartment. Right.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the $100,000 Pyramid, next on Game Show Network, followed by the dating game and the newlywed game. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. And, uh... How do you ladies feel? I mean, he did... Tell me the honest truth. I was rooting for him all the way. Really? Of course I was. Are you that good a sport? She is. He's, she he's, is. We know each other now from being on the show together, and he's, I was so happy for him. So tomorrow, so it's kill, David. <laughs> That's right. I don't want to win. You have both won $10,000. He has a little bit of an edge on you. You got uh, some shares of stock along the way there, sort of that uh, extra gratuity. Is this your studio where you do Archie Bunker? Yeah, right here. Maybe this is your good luck piece. Maybe. Yeah. Where do you do your Hill Street stuff? Uh, CBS Studio Center in Studio City. But it is seen on, on NBC. I, it's very confusing, yes. At MTM we make it. At CBS for NBC. Huh? <laughs> we'll see you here on CBS tomorrow on the new $25,000 pyramid for now, Dick Clark. So long. Some of our contestants will receive the Bissell Double Action Floor Sweeper, snaps up dirt and litter on carpet and bare floors, great for quick pickups between vacuuming from Bissell. And be everything you can be with Mary Kay Cosmetics, skin care and glamour cosmetics presented to you in your own home by trained beauty consultants, Mary Kay Cosmetics. Plus, Norelco's new clean water machine with its multi-layered charcoal filter helps make tap water taste bottled water clean, the clean water machine by Norelco. Also, Heath Bits of Brickle adds great almond coffee flavor to just about every dessert, a special Bits of Brickle ice cream pie. Plus, Black and Decker cordless dust buster, the light, powerful vacuum for small, fast cleanup, makes short work of little messes. Black and Decker's dust buster and Lipton noodles and sauce, your favorite side dish now in two creamy new flavors: new butter and herb, new sour cream and chives, delicious. This is Jeopardy! Now entering the studio are today's contestants. An attorney from Oakland, California, Jack Rauner. An urban planning lawyer from Potomac, Maryland, Sandy Shapiro. And our returning champion, a college instructor from Richardson, Texas, Bill Dickinson, whose two-day cash winnings total $16,000. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy!, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny. Well, obviously, we have a group of students in the audience today. I haven't heard screams like that since... No, I won't say it. <laughs> I'll get into trouble. Bill is our returning champion. We're delighted to welcome him back and also our newcomers, Sandy and Jack. Good luck to all three of you. Let's go to work in the first round. <laughs> Love those screams. Our categories in this first round of play are as follows. Around the world, television, dining out, science, potpourri, and will require an H in history in this final category. Each correct response, of course, will begin with that letter of the alphabet. Bill, start us off, please. H in history for 100. It became a U.S. territory in 1900 and was attacked 18 years before becoming a state. Jack. Hawaii? What is Hawaii? That's it. Uh, H in history for 200, please. From 1954 to 1969, he was president of North Vietnam. Bill. Who is Ho Chi Minh? Right. Uh, H in history for 300. The U.S. arsenal at this Shenandoah Valley location was raided October 16, 1859. Jack. What is Harper's Ferry? Yes. H in history for 400, please. Roman emperor from 117 to 138. He built walls in Germany as well as in Britain. Jack. Who is Hadrian? Yes. H in history for 500. Mode of protest used by Emmeline Pankhurst and Mohandas Gandhi while in jail. Sandy. What is a hunger strike? You're right. That's the H. Television for 100. On the November 16th, 1968 episode of Get Smart, Maxwell Smart married her. Bill. Who is Agent 99? Yes. Uh, television for 200. In 1990, Jimmy Smits won a Best Supporting Actor Emmy for his work on this NBC drama. Jack? What is NYDP Blue? No. Nope. NYPD Blue, pardon no, me. No, sorry. Bill. What is L.A. Law? L.A. Law. The year was 1990. NYPD Blue, of course, is more recent. Bill, back to you. Uh, around the world for 100. 
The name of these South American mountains may be derived from anti, a Quechuan word for east. Bill. What are the Andes? That's it. Around the world for 200. Women of India often drape the end of this wrapped garment over their heads. Sandy. What's a sari? Yes. Around the world for 300. Almost all Bedouins in the Middle East speak this language. Bill. What is Arabic? Right. Around the world for 400? This grain is Laos's chief agricultural product. Bill. What is rice? Yes. Around the world for 500. Queen's University, one of the two universities in Northern Ireland, is in this capital city. Sandy. What is Belfast? Belfast, yes. Television for 300. This series, Flubadub, had the head of a duck and the body of a dachshund. The series was Howdy Doody. <laughs> Sandy, go again. Television for 400. This Jane Wyman series was set in the fictitious Tuscany Valley in California. Sandy? Oh, um, was Falcon Crest. No, sorry, not, not in time. Bill? Uh, what is Falcon Crest? Falcon Crest, yes. Uh, television for 500. In 1966, Alice Pierce won a posthumous Emmy for her role as neighbor Gladys Kravitz on this ABC sitcom. Jack? What is December Bride? No. The series was Bewitched. Bewitched with the beloved Elizabeth Montgomery. All right, we're going to take our first break right now. We'll come back to conclude the round after this. The fastidious con you could have screamed just a little. Bill, you gave us the last correct response. Go again. Uh, dining out for 100? This kind of bar may have iceberg or romaine, cold veggies, and dressings on it. Bill. What is a salad bar? Yeah. Dining out for 200. At this type of restaurant, you really dine out, out in your automobile where you are served. Bill. What is a drive-in? Yeah. Uh, dining out for 300. You may be shown a tray for this course, whose name is from the old French for to clear the table. Jack. Buffet? What no. is a buffet? No. Bill or Sandy? Correct response, what is dessert? Usually they bring out the tray. Bring me the dessert tray and leave it. That's what I say. Bill. Dining out for 400. A trattoria usually specializes in this country's cuisine. Sandy. What is Italy? You're right. Dining out for 500. Rhyming name given to a lobster and steak combo. Sandy. What is surf and turf? Surf and turf. You got it. Potpourri for 100. One of this country's shekels can be broken down into 100 agarot. Jack. What is Israel? Yes. Potpourri for 200. In the basic form of this game, each player gets a card with five horizontal rows of numbers from 1 to 75. Bill. What is Kino? No. Sandy. What's Bingo? Bingo, yes. Kino has more numbers. Potpourri for 300. Peau de soie, a textile with good drapability and body, is woven from this fiber. Bill. What is Silk? Silk, yes. Potpourri for 400. Lydia and Xenia are women's names derived from this language. Jack. What is Greek? That's it. Science for 100, Alex. Among alkaloids found in plants, this stimulant is found in coffee and tea. Jack? What is caffeine? Correct. Science for 200. You may not need a high IQ to know IQ stands for this. Jack? What is intelligence quotient? That's right. Science for 300. Name for the process a caterpillar goes through to become a moth. Jack? What is metamorphosis? Right. Science for 400. When cocci live in pairs, they're called diplococci. In clusters, staphylococci. In chains, this. Jack. What is streptococci? That's right. Science for 500. The answer there is one of the daily doubles, and it took a long time to find it. And that means our players have accumulated a lot of money. Jack, you have the least amount, 1,300. Go for 700, Alan. All right, and even $2,000. Here is the clue. Next in length on the scale of geological time, age, epoch, period, era. What is division? No, what is eon? eon? Eons and eons ago. One more clue in potpourri for $500. The fad involving this type of radio followed the oil embargo of 1973-74. Bill. What is a ham radio? No. Ham radio? No. Sandy? What is talk radio? No. Correct response, what is CB? 
Radio, Citizens Band Radio. All right, we have Bill with 1600 and the lead. Next comes Sandy and then Jack Rauner from Oakland, California. An attorney who is studying voice over work and can do almost any accent. What does that mean? Well, I'd rather take voice over work any day, but it's voice over work. Voice over work. There you go, lad. There, there was are. no hyphen here. I'm saying <laughs> studying voice over work. I mean, you'd rather study voice over your work as an attorney. I don't like to be overworked as an attorney or anything else, but uh, kind of giving up the attorney work and trying to get into uh, doing a little bit of... Uh, actually, some of the uh, greatest opportunities in voiceover now are coming from the CD-ROM, where they're doing all these games, you know. All right, good. <laughs> I might consider that. Sandy Shapiro is from the Washington, D.C. area. More specifically, you live in Potomac, Maryland. That's right. An urban planning attorney. Another attorney. Two attorneys side by side. What's an urban planning attorney do? Work for the government or work for... I work for... for the federal agency that plans for the uh, monumental area of downtown Washington. All the monuments, memorials the museums. And in fact, my agency is planning for what Washington's going to look like in the next 100 years. Is this one of the agencies that the Republican majority is trying to get rid of? So far, hopefully not. Okay. I think we do good work. All right. Bill Dickinson is our champion. A soccer player. I, Started in school, I take it? Right. And I played for many years, and then after going to some of the World Cup games last, uh, last year, I got inspired to start again. Yeah, it is exciting, particularly when you understand the game and have played the game. Do you have a favorite, outside of the United States, do you have a favorite soccer team or soccer country playing? Uh, oh, well, my wife was born in Mexico, so I guess I'd have to say Mexican national team. So. Good <laughs> diplomatic response. We'll take a break, folks. Come back and play Double Jeopardy right after this. Work. Tell me we had a minor earthquake a few moments ago that uh, affected the lighting and our cameras in the studio. That's why one of our cameras was shaking. We didn't feel it here, so we're going on regardless. <laughs> Double Jeopardy, right now. And I hope that's just the name of the round. Two Daily Doubles coming up with these as our categories. First, 20th Century America. Next, gardening, authors, government and politics, seas, and on Broadway... 1968. Jack, start us off. 20th century America for 200, Alex. In April 1964, Ford introduced this new sporty car with a $2,368 sticker price. Bill. What is the Mustang? Mustang, right. 20th century America for 400? On July 5th, 1975, this Hawaiian volcano erupted for the first time in over 26 years. Bill. What is Mauna Loa? Right. 20th century America for 600. On April 6, 1917, America entered World War I, and this composer wrote, Over There. Bill. Who was Irving Berlin? No. Oh. Jack or Sandy? Sandy. Who was Cohan? George M. Cohan. You are right. Let's take government and politics for 200. In July of 1995, Ohio raised these. A passenger car traversing the state now pays $5.40, up from $4.80. Jack. What is a toll? Toll on the turnpike. Yes. 20th century America for 800, please. In March of 1925, this state passed a law banning the teaching of evolution in public schools. Jack. What is Tennessee? Yes. 20th century America for 1,000. He served in the House for 30 years before becoming FDR's first vice president in 1933. Bill. Who is John Nance Garner? Yes. Uh, gardening for 200. Hybrid perpetuals, like the American Beauty, were the main type of these in American gardens from 1840 to 1880. Jack? What are roses? Yes. On Broadway, 1968, for 200. He played Jimmy Shine on Broadway in 1968, the year after he played The Graduate on film. Sandy? Who is Dustin Hoffman? Yes. Uh, government and politics for 400. In March of 1995, she was removed from her South African cabinet post by her estranged husband. Jack? Who is Winnie Mandela? Right. On Broadway, 1968, for 400. Herschel Bernardi played this title Greek in a musical based on a Nikos Kazantzakis book. Jack. Zorba the Greek. Yes. On Broadway, 1968 for six. On Broadway since 1964, this musical starred Pearl Bailey in the title role in 1968. The musical had a long run. What is Hello, Dolly? Jack, back to you. On Broadway for 800. James Earl Jones starred on The Great White Way in this drama set in the world of boxing. Sandy. What's The Great White Hope? Yes. On Broadway, 68 for 1,000. 
Based on the film The Apartment, this Burt Bacharach Hal David musical opened in December. Popular song of the same title, Promises, Promises. Sandy, back to you. Government, You're in the lead. Government and politics for 600. Please. In January 1995, this country's government knocked four zeros off its Zloty. Zloty is the currency of Poland. Sandy, pick again. Government and politics for 800. Answer, a daily double, and it happens to be an audio. And the scores have remained unchanged for the last couple of minutes. You're in the lead by $400. I'll put $1,000. $1,000. All right. Here is the clue for you. Heard here, it's the anthem of the European Union. Listen to it. What is the ode to joy? You are absolutely right. And $1,000 more coming your way. Select again. Government and politics for a thousand, please. Ex-Soviet Republic ruled by Sapar Murad Nyakov, who calls himself Chief of the Turkmen. Jack. What is Turkmenistan? That's it. Authors for 200. During the Russo-Japanese War, this Call of the Wild author served as a reporter for Hearst. Bill. Who's Jack London? Yes. Gardening for 400? Answer there. This type of moss is most useful for growing acid-loving plants. Bill. What is peat moss? Yes. Gardening for 600. The oscillating type of this irrigation device sprays back and forth in a rectangular pattern. Bill. Was a sprinkler? Correct. Gardening for 800? Scarification is a technique where hard-shelled ones of these are scratched to help them sprout. Bill. What are seeds? Yes. Gardening for 1,000. Compared to a tree, this type of plant produces its branches near, at, or below the soil surface. Bill. What is a shrub? Yes, you did well in that gardening category. Okay, seas for 200? Answer there. Two island nations lie within this sea, Cyprus and Malta. Jack. What is the Mediterranean? That's it. Seas for 400. This sea was named for a warlike tribe of Indians that inhabited the Lesser Antilles. Jack. What is the Caribbean Sea? Yes. Seas for 600, please. The Scheldt River flows through Antwerp before emptying into this sea. Bill. What is the North Sea? Right, and we've got a minute to go. Seas for 800? Vladivostok is the most important port on this North Pacific Sea. Jack. What is the Sea of Japan? Yes. Uh, seas for 1,000. The answer, the other daily double. You're in second place. Trailing bill by 1,200. We'll go for $1,000. All right, here's the clue. The world's largest inland body of water. Its surface lies about 90 feet below sea level. What is the Caspian Sea? Well done. That's it. 6,000 for you. Go again. Authors for 400, Alex? As a youngster, this Billy Budd author worked in his brother's first store in Albany. Bill. Who is Herman Melville? Yes. Authors for 600. In 1971, this novelist was named Dame Commander in the Order of the British Empire. Jack. Who's Agatha Christie? Yes. Authors for 800? From 1846 to 1849, he was surveyor of the port of Salem, Massachusetts. Jack. Who's Thoreau? No. Bill or Sandy? Salem, Massachusetts. Nathaniel Hawthorne. One last clue to look at. Let's do it now. Sherwood Anderson helped this Mississippi author publish his first novel, Soldier's Pay. Bill. Who's William Faulkner? Right. And that takes you to 7,600. You have the lead. Jack is next with 5,800. Sandy on the board with 4,000. And final Jeopardy to come. Right now, a look at the prizes for the runners-up. I'm out of breath. Johnny? For today's second-place contestant, a Donjo original sculpture, Sea of Love, a limited edition, is exquisitely detailed in bronze and captures the true essence of the sea from Donjo Agora Hill Studio. And from Norison's Maymay collection, a handmade, luxuriously thick wool pile rug in a timeless Persian design, merging ancient traditions with modern taste from Norison. Today's third-place contestant would receive RCA's digital satellite system, an 18-inch satellite dish. The RCA digital satellite system gives you CD-quality satellite up to 150 channels and a digital picture so sharp it raises home theater to a new level. And all contestants receive a choice of Game Tech's newest editions of Jeopardy for play on computer at home or on the road. And take the Jeopardy challenge. Now you can keep score and play along with the official Jeopardy scorekeeper from ITV. From teens to seniors, a must for any Jeopardy fan. And now once again, here's Alex. Thanks, Johnny. Final Jeopardy category, folks. Medical firsts. The clue in a moment. 
Medical firsts. Good topic for our final Jeopardy today. As always, you'll have 30 seconds to write down your question as a response to this answer today. The death of Denise Darval in a traffic accident permitted this historic December 3rd, 1967 event. Good luck. To which medical first did this clue refer? Let's start in the middle with you, Sandy Shapiro. You had $4,000. Will that go up or will it be reduced? What is the first organ transplant? I'm sorry, that is not specific enough for us. And so it will cost you $3,999, dropping you all the way down to $1. Let's go to your left now to Jack Rohner. He had $5,800. His response, what is a heart transplant? Yes, indeed, it was the first heart transplant and we needed that. The wager was $1,799, and that means that at $7,599, he is just a shade off the lead. So he hopes Bill made a mistake. Did he? What is a heart transplant? He came up with the correct response, so he will remain Jeopardy! champion. Did he wager a lot? $4,001. That is a lot. $11,601, and a three-day total of $27,601. Well done. Congratulations, players. A good game. We're going to wrap up the week with our champion coming back to defend once more tomorrow, same time, here on Jeopardy. See you then. Today's second and third place contestants will receive Oscal Calcium Supplement. Costs just pennies more a day than store brands. Proven effective and doctor recommended. Don't take chances, take Oscal. Add fiber to your diet with Nabisco 100% brand. It tastes great and it's got half the sodium of Kellogg's all-brand original. New Extra Strength Gas X Soft Gels. Powerful, fast-acting gas pain relief in an easy-to-swallow pill. Glade plug-in refills. Don't forget to refill your Glade plug-ins every 45 days to keep your home Glade fresh. Now you can lose weight by eating delicious chocolate-flavored caramel candy. Permathene candy with the appetite control ingredient that's helped millions. Delicious permathene weight loss candy. Robitussin cold formulas from the brand recommended by doctors, pharmacists, and Dr. Mom. Discover Robitussin relief for your cold. Stress Tabs High Potency Formula helps convert food into energy and it contains vitamin C and folic acid. It's America's number one B-complex vitamin. Week on Hollywood Squares, the Baldwin brothers start a family feud. When you heard, Billy! It meant something else. I bet it did. Plus, Cindy Crawford and Kristen Johnson. Okay, that's what I need is another alien joke. Okay, okay sorry. Okay. Doing that. Hollywood Squares, where the stars come out to play weekdays at 10.30, 2.30, and 6 Eastern on Game Show Network. This is Johnny Gilbert speaking. Jeopardy! was created by Merv Griffin. Produced by Columbia TriStar Television. It's time to register to play our interactive game shows. Call 1-800-537-GAME. It's fast, it's fun, and it's free. You only have to register once to play forever on Game Show Network. Angel Network Bear and the rest of the friendly forest creatures. Hey, give a hoot. It's all play all day on Game Show Network. Doot, doot. And now, from the traveled crossroads of the world in beautiful Hawaii, it's the Diamond Head Game, starring Bob Eubanks. Thank you very much and aloha, everybody, and welcome to Diamond Head, coming to you from the paradise of the Pacific. Now, today, two contestants from each of our four audience islands will be answering questions with an international flair. Then our four semifinalists will compete in an exciting climb of Diamond Head, where one of them will have a chance to grab their share at over $100,000 in cash and prizes. And later in the show, we'll explain how you at home can win a vacation here in Hawaii. But right now, please join me in saying aloha to the beautiful Miss Jane Nelson. Jane? Jane's on island number one, and that's where I am, too. We're going to pick our first two contestants today to play the Diamond Head game. So who on island number one would like to come down here and play this game with us? Anybody here? Israel, you want to play? Israel and Robin. Robin, you come down here also. 
Okay, we have our first two contestants today. We'll get the game underway in just a moment from now. Welcome back to the Diamond Head Game. We're going to say hi to our first two contestants today who are representing Islands Number One. And your name is Israel... Lawrence. Israel Lawrence. And Israel, you work for who? Department of Education. For the Department of Education, all right. You have a very lovely young lady who is pitting her talents against you today. And her name is Robin... Deck. Robin Deck. What do you do, Robin? I'm a secretary. A secretary. Israel and Robin, we have a very nice prize for one of you at Island Number One. And Jim Thompson's going to tell you about that prize right now. Jim? It's a gas range from Tappan. The new gallery gas range with a built-in warming shell featuring the new 20 25-inch oven with continuous cleaning of regular baking temperatures, lift-off doors, wide broiler pan, and the electric clock from Happen. Okay, that's what we're playing for at Island Number One. Now remember, one of you, one of you will be joined by the other three island winners in that exciting climb up Diamond Head, where there's over $100,000 in cash and prizes at the top. But right now, let's get on with Island Number One. I'm going to ask you three questions. For each correct answer, you'll get one point. Then the player at the end of three questions who gets the most points will be the winner. However, let me caution you that if you answer a question wrong, then that point will go to your opponent and you'll be very disappointed at that point won't you so anyway once you buzz in i cannot repeat the question put your hands on your buzzers now robin and israel and here we go with your first question good luck to both of you gerald ford before becoming vice president and later president held another important post in the united states government was he chief justice of the supreme court minority leader of the house or secretary of agriculture israel what was he minority leader of the house yes he was that and israel gets the first one Robin's a good sport. She's applauding your success there. Robin, here's one for both of you. Now, it's a true or false question. True or false, while a congressman, Gerald Ford, represented the state of Nebraska. What do you think, Robin? False. False is right. He represented the state of Michigan. Oh. Well, that's close, one. Okay, you have one apiece. This is the tiebreaker. You have a tiki light on each of our tikis here. Much has been written about a sport that Mr. Ford played while a student in college. Was he a football player, a javelin thrower, or a hockey goalie? Israel, what do you say? Football player. He was a football player. Israel gets it right. Israel, you won that gallery gas range, and you're going to be our first competitor in our exciting climb up Diamond Head. And Robin, we have a very nice prize, a consolation prize in Del Webb's Kui Lima Hotel for you. And thank you both thank you. for playing the game with us today. Game Show Network is truly interactive. Visit us and play along at our website. It's www.sony.com. Or just drop us a line through the good old-fashioned United States Postal Service. Our address is Game Show Network, Post Office Box 805, Culver City, California, 90232-0805. And I'm going to join Jane Nelson on island number two, and we're going to pick two more contestants to play this game. Jane, let's see who would like to play the Diamond Head game. Hey, Joanne! Joanne up on top, and Gary! Gary over in the corner. Oh, my goodness, here comes Joanne. She's ready to play. And Jim, what's she playing for? From Leonard Silver, it's a footed, silver-plated, six-piece tea set, including tray, coffee pot, teapot, sugar bowl, waste bowl, and creamer, all from Leonard Silver Manufacturing Company. I thought you were hurt. I, re I thought you were hurt. I said, Joanne, and you started to scream. Are you okay? Yes. My goodness, you're excited about all this. You're Joanne? Elias. Elias. And is it Mrs. Elias? Yes. All right. And Gary? Belt. Gary Belt. Gary, yes. how about you? You have a family? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, wife and one daughter. Fine. All right. Gary and Joanne, one of you will be our second competitor in our exciting climb up Diamond Head, so let's get on with it right now. Put your hand on your buzzer, and Jane Nelson, would you please assist me, because Jane is holding a cooking pan furnished by the Antique Guild of Los Angeles. Now, this was used to cook a favorite dish in many Scandinavian countries. Would this be used to cook snails, pastry dishes, or donuts? What do you think, Gary? Uh, pastry dishes. Yes, that's what it is. Pastry oh, dishes. Wow. Are you still as excited as you? Are you still as excited as you uh, are? Yes. 
It's, it's, it's diminishing, though, isn't it? I can tell, because you need a point very badly. Here's a true or false question for you. True or false, according to the newest translation of the Bible, Eve tempted Adam in the Garden of Eden with a kumquat. <laughs> Gary? Uh, false? Yes, that's false. It was an apple. You know that. Okay, Gary, the fabulous tea set belongs to you, Joanne. It was fun having you run down that bridge and joining us. Believe me, it was. And we have a nice constellation prize in Del Webb's Lima Hotel. Okay, we've got now our first two competitors. And our climb up diamond head will be going to island number three and island number four. And we come back after this word. You know, we have some great prizes inside Diamond Head today. One of them is a $2,000 gift certificate from the famous Spiegel catalog with more than 500 pages, new twice a year, and over 50,000 quality items, providing value, selection, and economy. That's Spiegel. Let's go to island number three. Jane Nelson's waiting for me, and we're going to play this game once again. Now, who on island number three would like to play the Diamond Head game with us? Hey, Bob, Bob, you want to play? Bob and Diane. Bob and Diane, come down here. We've got our next two contestants, Jim Thompson. They're excited ones to so tell us what they're playing for. Bob, it's the Lockley Sea Devils. 12 feet of fun in the sun. Fits three adults comfortably. It's portable and is carried easily on the top of your car. The Lockley Sea Devils. Bob and Diane on island number three. One of you will join Israel and Gary on that exciting climb up Diamond Head where at the top there's $100,000 in cash and prizes. Now remember, if you answer this question incorrectly, the point will go to your opponent. And once you've buzzed in, I cannot repeat the question. Bob, you are Bob... Davies. Bob Davies and Diane... Andrews. Are you ready, Diane? Yeah! I just thought I'd ask. I didn't know. So. Would you put your hand on your buzzer? You got it there? Mm -hmm. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Oh, you're right-handed. Yeah. So that's your buzzer handle. Yeah. Right? Okay, Bob's already to. Here we go with our first question. The ancient Greek poet Homer recorded in the Iliad the story of the Ten Years' War between the Greeks and another powerful empire of the ancient world. Was this war fought between the Greeks and the Bulgarians, the Trojans, or the Sicilians? Bob, what do you say? Trojans. Yes, it was the Trojans. <laughs> Diane, come on now. She's still excited, but put your hand on your buzzer and let's try it again. According to the story, the Trojan War started when a young Trojan prince kidnapped the beautiful queen of a powerful Greek king. Was this queen named Helen, Phyllis, or Judy? Bob? Helen. Helen is right. Bob, you got them both right. That sea devil sailboat belongs to you, Robert and Diane. We have a nice consolation prize in Doe Webb's Lima Hotel, and thank you for playing the game with us. Be sure to send your postcards in for our home audience game where two of you can win a vacation for two, or one of you, I should say, can win a vacation for two right here in Hawaii. We'd love to have you join us. So send those postcards in. And now let's go to island number four and find our final competitor today. Jay Nelson, who wants to play this game over here with us today? Let's see. Uh, Gary, yeah, uh, Gary, come on. Gary and Betty. Gary and Betty, come down here. And they're representing island number four, and let's find out what the prize on island number four is. Jim? It's Fashion's a wardrobe from Zero Shirt Makers. These classic shirts feature the new purest button-down collar in a distinctive collection of colors and patterns from Zero Shirt Makers, plus from Lucien Picard, his and her watches with dependable precision and quality, distinguished styling and contemporary jewel timepieces from Lucien Picard. Uh, okay. <laughs> Gary... Gomes. Gary Gomes. Gomes. I said, Gary, what do you do? Um, he says, I'm a cook. And I expect him to say, for some big restaurant. And I said, who do you cook for? And he said? The Army. The Army. <laughs> That's who he cooks for. <laughs> Betty, who do you cook for? <laughs> no, I was myself. Oh, just yourself. Yeah. So you are Miss Betty. Miss Betty who? That's right. Phil. Miss Betty Phil. All right. Gary and Betty, here's your first question now, because one of you will be our fourth and final competitor in our exciting climb up Diamond Head. Are you ready? Here it comes. In this game, we're going to look at clothing and fashions. In the 1890s, women wore clothing in a style known as the hourglass look. Look. Was it called this because grains of sand were sprinkled over the dress? You could actually tell time by a woman's outfit, or the waistline was laced in as tightly as possible. Gary? Waistline was... Uh, it was. It certainly was. Yes, it was all <laughs> tight in there. Like mine should be, believe me. <laughs> Next question now. Women in India wear a particular type of costume composed of yards of material which is wrapped around the entire body. Is this outfit called a Sahara? A sari or a seersucker? Mm. Betty? A sari. Sari, that's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, one piece, Gary and Betty. This is our tiebreaker. Let's see how well you do with this one. If a man were adjusting an article of clothing called a cravat, would this be his suspenders, top hat, or... Mm. Betty? It's his necktie. It's his necktie. Betty, ah! watch that belong to you, Betty. Gary, we have a nice consolation prize from Del Webb's Kualima Hotel, and thank you both for playing the game with us today. We've got them now. We've got our four competitors to start our exciting climb up Diamond Head, and that climb will begin one minute from right now. For fame, 
looking for fortune? Well, look no further than Game Show Network's School of Hand Gestures. Since 1955, our graduates have dominated the industry. When you enroll, you'll learn the flip and lift, the seated gesture, look ma, two hands, synchronized gesturing, the graceful exit, and the patented S maneuver. Game Show Network's School of Hand Gestures. Our students are in good hands. We had a lot of fun on island number one, two, three, and four, and now we have our four fine semi-finalists, or finalists, whatever it happens to be, because they're about to begin this exciting climb right now. And remember you, Bob, Israel, Gary, and Betty, one of you will go inside Diamond Head. One of you will have your chance to grab over $100,000 in cash and prizes. So here's how we're going to do it. Now, you know you've won some great prizes thus far. Those prizes are yours to keep no matter what happens the rest of the day. Now, I'm going to give you a category, and then I'll show you a list of words that fit in that category. Then we'll go around in order, and I'll call your names one at a time. And you'll recite those words back to me until one of you is eliminated either by repeating a word or not responding within three seconds time. If all the words are recalled, then we'll play that round all over again. And to make it more fun for you, the next three contestants to make it to the next level on your exciting climb up Diamond Head, well, Jane Nelson will walk out and will hand you a $50 bill that will belong to you. And you can keep it no matter what happens, right? Now, our order was determined by a random selection. So, Bob, in the first category, it'll start with you. It'll go Bob, Israel, Gary, and Betty. Everybody know how to play the game? Everybody ready? Take a big, deep breath. Here we go, contestants. Here's your first category. The category is holidays. Reveal the words. July 4th, Valentine's Day, Halloween, Election Day, Veterans Day, Christmas, Memorial Day, Passover, New Year's, Labor Day, Easter, Thanksgiving. Bob? Passover. Halloween. Christmas. Thanksgiving. Easter. Fourth of July. Independent. Uh... <laughs> Time's up, Gary. I'm sorry you've been eliminated, but thank you very much for playing the game with us today. And Betty, Israel, and Bob take the next step up, and Jay Nelson hand them each $50. Now, was that an easy $50 to make? Was that easy? <laughs> no. Well, it wasn't easy, Bob. said, no, that wasn't easy at all. Are you nervous, Robert? Yes. Yes, Bob is nervous. You have your eyes closed when you answer. How come? Okay, now, I'll tell you what. The next two contestants to make it to the next level, right up there, Jane Nelson will walk out and give you each a $100 bill. So you'll have $150 in your hand. And this time, Betty will start with you on this one. The category will be Hitchcock Movies. Reveal the words. Psycho. Rear Window. To Catch a Thief. The Birds. Frenzy. Dial M for Murder. The Wrong Man. Spellbound. Vertigo, Suspicion, I Confess, Torn Curtain. Betty? The Birds. Dial M for Murder. Hey, Bob. Suspicion. Time is up on that one. Bob, you went out of turn. I'm sorry. It has to go Betty, Bob, and, and Israel. So, Bob and Betty, you come up to the next level. Israel, thank you very much for playing the game with us. And we're sorry you were eliminated. And now, Jane Nelson, would you please hand them $100 apiece? And now you got $150 in your little paws. What are you going to do with that money, Betty? <laughs> I know what you, you're wadded up right now, aren't you? Okay, one of you, one of you will be our finalist to go inside Diamond Head. One of you will have your chance to grab your share of over $100,000 in cash and prizes. And Betty, again, we'll start with you this time. So here we go with our third and final category. The category is Indians. Reveal the words. Cochise, Tonto, Pocahontas, Running Bear, Crazy Horse, Hiawatha, Geronimo, Montezuma, Minnehaha, Sitting Bull, Pontiac, Pahu. Betty? Pahu. Sitting Bull. Montezuma. Um, Hiawatha. Cochise. Um, I... Betty couldn't come up with one. Betty, you've been eliminated. You have $150 in your hand. And thank you very much for playing that game. And Robert, Bob, step up here because you're our finalist. And you're going inside Diamond Head and grab your share at over $100,000 in cash and prizes. So, Bob, if you're ready, let's open up Diamond Head and take a look inside. There it is where you're going in just a minute from now. We'll be right back with more of the Diamond Head game. Well, Bob Davis, this is the moment you've been waiting for because now you are about to enter Diamond Head. And let me tell you what's inside. Bob, inside are bills representing over $100,000 in cash and prizes, from $50 bills right up to a $10,000 bill that's inside there. There's a bill in there that has a new Mercedes on it. There's all kinds of new cars and fabulous prizes. In fact, Jim Thompson's going to tell you about some of those prizes right now. Jim? 
Well, we have a full-length mink coat. The elegant touch of class is this natural white mink full-length coat from Dicker & Dicker of Beverly Hills. It's worth over $4,800. Also, a $12,000 South American cruise. Yes, you'll sail aboard a Prudential Cruises Santa Liner to Mexico, the Caribbean, and South America. Enjoy uncrowded luxury and personal service. And a Mercedes-Benz, a brand-new 280S with air, power, sunroof, cruise control, and leather interior from your cars of Hawaii Limited, worth over $16,000. Oh, ooh, Bob, ooh. Bob, if you would come out of there with a bill that had a, a full-length mink coat on it, do you have a lady you'd give that to? No. I bet you it wouldn't be hard to find one, do you think? Especially if you came out with a Mercedes and a full-length mink coat. You I would have use a... the Mercedes. Oh, you could use the Mercedes. All right, well, you're going to have your chance because you're going to have 15 seconds to grab as many bills in there as you can and place them in your treasure bag, okay? At the end of 10 seconds, I'll give you a five-second warning. That means that if you have any bills in your hand, be sure and stuff them in the treasure bag because at the end of 15 seconds, we're only interested in the bills that are actually in the bag. Now, you can't pick them up off the ground. You can't trap them against your body. You've got to grab them right out of the air and stuff them in the bag. And it's a lot of fun in there, too. When you come out, we'll play another the game will pull out a maximum of 10 bills and also I want to caution you that inside there are some one dollar bills and you don't want any one dollar bills so Bob Davies if you're ready Jane Nelson's gonna help you inside Diamond Head and while they're going in Jim Thompson please tell us about another prize that Bob will be looking for today well there's a boat the Guppy 13 designed for family fun handles easily cabin sleeps too with cockpit storage compartments and self-riding features complete with custom design Guppy trailer <laughs> Why are you jumping up and down, Bob? Are you ready to go? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Let's get on with it? <laughs> okay, you're going to have 15 seconds. Remember, at the end of 10 seconds, I'll give you a five-second warning. You cannot start until I say, ready, go. And you must stop when you hear this sound here. You hear that sound? Okay, Bob Davies, if you're ready, let's fire up Diamond Head. Release the bills. Ready, go. Jane Nelson, would you help Bob Davies out of Diamond Head, take off his treasure bag, and let's see what he has inside. Okay, Jane, bring Bob Davies down here, and let's open up his treasure bag, and let's have a little fun. Now. Bob, can I have the treasure bag? You want to give it up? Reluctantly, he gives up his treasure bag, because now is when the fun will really begin. Bob, you're from where originally? Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Bob Davies from Phoenix, Arizona, this is the time you've been waiting for because I'm going to draw up to a maximum of 10 bills, one bill at a time. Every bill I draw will be yours to keep. However, if a $1 bill comes out, then you know the game is over at that point. Understand? Yes, sir. All right, so let's reach in right now and let's pull out your first bill and let's get on with it. Very beginning, you're on your way, Bob, because I've got your first bill in my hand. It's a $100 bill. Yes. Oh, that belongs to you. Now, one bill out. You so far have $100 in one bill. Let's pull out your next bill. Anytime you want to stop, you simply tell me because you know if a $1 bill comes up that you'll have to give me back that money you have in your hand. So what do you want to do with this bill that I've got right now? You want to see it or you want to go? Okay. He says he'd like to see this one. Why not? There's another $100 for you. You've got $200. And we're going to reach in and pull out your third bill. I've got your third bill in my hand right now. And I'm going to ask Jane Nelson to come down here and give us a hand because Jane has a treasure bag exactly like the one that you brought out. See her treasure bag? And there's your treasure bag. I'm going to make a very, very nice trade with you because I will trade. I will trade what Jane has in her treasure bag for this bill I have in my hand and the rest of the bills inside your treasure bag. So here's what you can do. You can take the $200 and what she has in her treasure bag and go home, or you can see this bill. If this is a $1 bill, you'll lose everything, but it could be a big bill, too. What do you want to do? Take the bag. He wants to take what Jane has inside her treasure bag. Okay, and the audience is with you, and let's see if that was the right decision. Bob, let me ask you a question. First of all, have you ever wished, have you ever wished that you could go to the country with the wind blowing in your face on a beautiful, beautiful motorcycle. Have you ever wished that? No, I've had bad experiences. You've had bad experiences. I broke well, my leg on. I'll tell you, if you ever wish, once again, that you could ride through the desert or through the mountains on a beautiful motorcycle, you're going to need this because on your motorcycle will be this fantastic, beautiful horn. That's it, Bob, right there. That horn belongs to you, but all has not been lost because you have $200 in your hand, and you won that fantastic horn. But, Bob, let me show you the bill that I had in my hand. 
It was a bill to a fabulous Caribbean cruise. Bob and Jim Thompson, tell him about it. Bob, come back. <laughs> it's a Caribbean South American air sea cruise from Creative World Travel. Glamorous San Juan, Curacao, Venezuela, Guadalupe, and St. Thomas from Creative World Travel. Bob, you turned down a Caribbean cruise, but all is not lost, as I said before, because you have $200 in your hand. You want $150 on your climb up Diamond Head. You want a sailboat on your island. So today, you walked away with a grand total of over $550, and we've enjoyed having you, Bob Davies, Thank you. on the Diamond Head game. Jane, come down here. A Caribbean cruise he turned down. Doggone it. Well, Jane Nelson, Bob Eubanks, and Bob Davies, our contestants today, all wishing that you'll join us and some other lucky travelers, and once again, we'll play the Diamond Head game. So long, everybody, and aloha. Travel arrangements are furnished by Continental Airlines. Put yourself into something good. Continental DC-10 to Hawaii, your choice of data departure. Through your travel agent or Continental Airlines, we really move our tail for you. This is Jim Thompson speaking. The Diamond Head Game is an Ed Fisher with Randall Greer production. Some of our contestants today will receive AC Delco to Tune Up America, quality parts for your car, AC spark plugs, AC oil and air filters, and Delco points and condensers. Also, Ditto of California, feel the fit, the hottest jeans in the country. Ditto fit is unique. Every pair is hand measured. High risers, banana pants, and quick drawer. And Charm Goet, completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere. Camping beats, patio, or poolside. Instant play without starter foods or charcoal. Charm Glow product. Also, Thompson's water sealer to protect your home. Waterproofs, concrete, wood, fabric, leather, canvas shingles. It's easy, safe, and economical. Thompson's water seal. Additional fee and or prizes furnished by E.A. Thompson and Lockley. Announced prices and models of automobiles may be changed due to availability. The price of the Toyota does not include tax and license. Hotel accommodations are limited to certain months and subject to availability. The cost for the cruise is based on the tour price and is available only during certain months. you at home you want a vacation for two right here in Hawaii. Right now, won't you please join me in saying aloha to the beautiful Miss Jane Nelson. Janie? Jane's an island number one and I am too. We're going to pick our first two contestants to play the Diamond Head game today. Anybody here want to play this game with us? Yolanda, Yolanda, you want to play? And Lynn, Lynn, come on down here. Yolanda and Lynn are on their way down. We'll be right back to the Diamond Head game after this word. Welcome back to the Diamond Head Game. Representing island number one, we have a waitress and a secretary today. And our waitress's name is? Lynn. Lynn what? Tachino. Tachino, all right. And Lynn is playing against Yolanda? Salanaka. Salanaka. Right. Did I say it right, Salanaka? Perfect. It, oh, good. And Yolanda, you're a secretary for who? I work for the U.S. Navy. You work for the United yes, States Navy. Service. Well, Lynn and Yolanda, we have a very nice prize for you in Island Number One, and Jim Thompson's going to tell you about that right now. It's a gas range from Tappan. The new gallery gas range with the built-in warming shelf featuring the new 25-inch oven with continuous cleaning and regular baking temperatures, lift off doors, wide broiler pan, and electric clock from Tappan. You're playing for a nice prize in this island, but also one of you will be our first competitor in our exciting climb up Diamond Head. We're at the top. There's over $100,000 in cash and prize. Now, here's the way we play it. I'm going to ask you three questions. For each correct answer, you'll get one point. Then the player at the end of three questions who gets the most points will be the winner. Uh, I must caution you, if you answer a question incorrectly, the point will go to your opponent. And once you buzzed in, I cannot repeat the question. So, Lynn and Yolanda, if you are ready, put your hands on your buzzers. And here we go with question one. If someone is an expert in hieroglyphics, does this mean that person knows all about water skiing, bird calls, or ancient Egyptian writing? Oh, what do you think it is, Yolanda? Ancient Egyptian That's writing. That's what it is. Yes, ancient Egyptian writing. 
Yolanda, you have one right, and Lynn, you need one very badly. And here's your chance. It's a true or false, so I need a true or false answer. True or false, ladies, hieroglyphics involved using pictures instead of letters or words to convey ideas. What true. do you think, Yolanda? Yolanda says that's true, and it is true. That's correct. You've won that tap and gas range. Yolanda, congratulations to you. And Lynn, we have a nice consolation prize in Del Webb's Kualima Hotel, and thank you for playing the game with us. Game Show Network is truly interactive. Visit us and play along at our website. It's www.sony.com. Email your questions and comments to Winnie at GameShowNet.com. Or drop us a line through the good old-fashioned United States Postal Service. Our address is Game Show Network, Post Office Box 805, Culver City, California, 90232-0805. We have a lot of fun in the Diamond Head game, and we're going to pick two more contestants to play that game with us now. And I'm on island number two, and Jay Nelson is too, and who would like to do it? Who wants to play Diamond? Okay, Karen, Karen, come on, and Rick, Karen and Rick. We've got our next two contestants, Jim Thompson, so tell us about what they're playing for on island number two. All right, Bob, it's from Leonard Silver, a footed, silver-plated, six-piece tea set, including tray, coffee pot, teapot, sugar bowl, waste bowl, and creamer, all from Leonard Silver Manufacturing Company. It's Rick and Karen on island number two, and Rick, the C stands for what? Coletto. Coletto, and yeah. Rick is a carpenter, is that correct? Yes. And Karen, Karen, yes. can you see me? Yes, I can see. You know, we could use you for a tiki if we ever run out of tiki. Stand over here to the side there. Just about the right side. We'd put a buzzer on your head and away we'd go, right? Okay, Karen, back behind your tiki now. Now, one of you will be our second competitor in our exciting climb of Diamond Head, so if you put your hand on your buzzer, here we go with your first question. Jane is holding an item furnished by the Antique Guild of Los Angeles that can be found in many English households. Is this item used as a dish rack, a toast rack, or a flower stand? What do you think, Karen? Toast rack? That's what it is, a toast rack. Karen gets it right. Thank you, Jane. Oh, isn't this fun? She's got one right. I'll tell you what, your second question is about bread also. So hands in your buzzers, and here we go. This is a true or false question, contestants. True or false, bread is often called the staff of life. What do you think, Rick? True. That is true. Bread is one of the man's oldest right. foods. We're tied, one apiece. Okay, Rick and Karen, you each have one point apiece, and now this is our tiebreaker. Let's see how we do. It's another true or false question. So hands in your buzzers. Here it comes. True or false? When bread was first made, it was baked by the heat of the sun. What do you think, Karen? True. That is true, Karen. Yes. And Karen, you've won that fabulous silver tea set. It belongs to you, Rick. We have a nice consolation prize from Del Webb's Kualima Hotel. And thank you both for playing Diamond Head with us. Okay, we have our first two competitors. And our exciting climb of Diamond Head, we'll need two more. From Island 3 and Island 4, and we'll find them when we come right back. Give me one good re You know, we have some great prizes inside Diamond Head today. One of them is a $2,000 gift certificate from the famous Spiegel catalog. With more than 500 pages new twice a year and over 50,000 quality items, providing value, selection, and economy. Spiegel. To item number three, I'll go and join Jane Nelson. We're going to pick two contestants, Jane, to play the Diamond Head game with us now. Who on item number three wants to play? Okay, Chris, you want to play, Chris? And... Aricia, Chris and Aricia, come down here and let's play the game. And Jim Thompson, tell us what they're playing for. It's the Lock Lee Sea Devil. 12 feet of fun in the sun. Fits three adults comfortably. It's portable and is carried easily on the top of your car. The Lock Lee Sea Devil. Aricia or Aricia? Which way? Aricia. Aricia. Okay. Yeah. Aricia who? Stanton. Aricia Stanton and Chris? Brittleman. Bertelman, you're both representing island number three. The winner of this round will join Yolanda and Karen and the winner from island number four in that climb of Diamond Head. And you know what's at the top? $100,000 in cash and prizes. Now remember, if you answer a question wrong, the point will go to your opponent. Once you buzz in, I can't repeat the question. So, Risha and Chris, hands in your buzzers. First question sounds like this. I would like to ask you some questions about expressions we've all heard. What does the expression to kick the bucket mean? Arisha? Die. To die or to pass away, judges says that's yeah. fine. Arisha gets the first one right. One of the choices was to flunk out of West Point, I don't think. <laughs> Next question now, and Chris, you need this one. According to this old expression, if you had a white elephant, would you have an elephant who walked under paint, a large African statue, or something nobody wants? Arisha. 
something nobody wants. Arisa, you've got that one right. Also, you've won that Sea Devil sailboat. It belongs to you and Chris. We have a nice consolation prize from Del Webb's Kualima Hotel. And Arisa is going to join Yolanda and Karen on our race up Diamond Head. Be sure to send your postcards in for our home audience game where you can win a vacation for two right here in Hawaii. We'd love to have you join us. Let's go to island number four and pick two more contestants now. Jane Nelson, who on island number four would like to play this time? Let's see. Uh, Sula. Sula. Where's Sula? And Paul. Paul, come on down here and let's play the game with me. Sula and Paul, they're on their way down. And Jim, tell us about what they're looking for. It's Fashion's a wardrobe from Cyril Shirtmakers. These classic shirts feature the new Pyrrhus button-down collar and a distinctive collection of colors and patterns from Cyril Shirtmakers. Plus, from Lucian Picard, his and her watches with dependable pre precision and quality. Distinguished styling and contemporary jewel timepieces from Lucian Picard. I have never heard the name Sula before. Is that a nickname of any kind? No, it's my real name. That's your real name? Yes, I was named after an aunt who was named after somebody, and it's in a family. <laughs> and you end up Sula. Sula who? <laughs> Graf. Sula Graf. What brings you to Hawaii? My husband's in the service here. Okay, Sula Graf and Paul. Paul, you're a great big fellow. You are Paul... Hanson. Hanson. And Paul, how about you? What brings you to Hawaii? Oh, we're here on a two-week vacation. From a little Canada. vacation from Canada. Okay, Sula and Paul, one of you will be our fourth and final competitor. You know how to play the game. Any questions about that? All right. Then I've got some questions for you. So put your hand on the buzzer and here we go. Sherazad did something for her husband every night for 1,001 nights. Did she wash his hair, tickle his fancy, or tell him a story? Paul? Tell him a story. That's what she did, yes. <laughs> tickle his fancy. <laughs> Next question. Sula, you better get this oh, right. Oh, I'm trying hard. What are Sherazad's famous stories known as? The Uncle Remus stories, the Twice Told Tales, or the Arabian Nights Entertainment? What do you think, Paul? The Arabian Nights. Paul, you got them both right. That's correct. You won those beautiful shirts and watch that. They belong to you. So we have a nice consolation prize Thank from Del Webb's Kualima Hotel. And we've got them. We've got four competitors. And in a moment, we'll start our race up Diamond Head when we come back after this word. Congratulations, Karen, Paul, Yolanda, and Arisha, because you've all won some great prizes thus far, and those prizes are yours to keep no matter what happens. Paul, you tower over those ladies, don't you? Paul, how tall are you? 6'3", and how about you, Karen? 4'10", against 6'3". Okay, now each of you will now attempt to climb Diamond Head, but only one of you will reach the top, where there is a fortune in cash and prizes, and here's how we're going to do it. I'll give you a category, and I'll show you a list of words that fit in that category. Then we'll be going around in order, and I'll ask you one at a time to recall a word until one of you is eliminated by either repeating a word or not responding within three seconds. If all the words are recalled, then we'll play that round all over again. And to make it more fun for you, Karen, Paul, Yolanda, and Arisha, if you make it to the next level on your climb up Diamond Head, Jane Nelson will give you a $50 bill apiece, okay? And remember, our starting order was determined by random selection, so the first time it'll go Karen, Paul, Yolanda, and Arisha in that order. If you're ready, contestants, here is your first category. The category is World Capitals. Reveal the words. Rome, Bonn, Peking, Havana, Dublin, Vienna, Bangkok, Belgrade, London, Baghdad, Ottawa, Bern. Karen? Bern. Rome. Ottawa. Bangkok. Tokyo. Tokyo is not on the list, Karen. I'm awfully sorry, but thank you very much for playing the game with us. And Paul, you'll land in Arisha, step up to the next level where Jane Nelson will now hand you a $50 bill. Okay, now you've each got $50 in your hand, and I'll tell you what I'll do this time. The next two to make it to the next level of Diamond Head, Jane Nelson will give you a $100 bill. So, if you're ready, Paul, you'll land in Arisha. Here is your next category, and Paul, will start with you this time. The category, in the newspaper, reveal the words. Front page, sales, society, editorials, want ads, funnies, sports, advice, personals, columns, politics, News. Paul? Front page. Sports. Personal. Comics. Sales. Comics is not on the list, Paul. I'm awfully sorry. The word was funnies, not comics. You've been eliminated, but thank you very much for playing the game. And Yolanda and Arisha, come up to the next level because you now have $100 a piece in your hand, giving you a total of $150 that you've earned thus far on this climb. But that's not the half of it because one of you will go inside Diamond Head and grab your share at over $100,000 in cash and prizes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, take a big deep breath. Yolanda, you'll go first. The category is card night. Reveal the words. Cards, card table, ante, potato chips, beer, sandwiches, blackjack, green felt, cigarettes, money, poker chips, dealer's choice. Yolanda. Poker chips, green felt, blackjack, ante, poker. 
Green Fountain. Poker is not on the list, Julian. I'm awfully sorry. You have been eliminated. And Arisha, step up here because you have done it. You're our finalist, Arisha. Step right over here. You're going inside. Diamond Hayden got your share of over $100,000 in cash prizes. And take a look at that. There it is, right there. We're going to get her all ready, and we'll be right back with more of the Diamond Hayden game. <laughs> It's Arisha Stanton, is that correct? Well, this is the moment you've been waiting for, Arisha, because look what's happened to you thus far. Down there on your island, you won a sailboat. On the way up Diamond Head, you won $150 in cash. And now the excitement is about to begin because you're going to go inside Diamond Head, and in there, there are bills representing over $100,000 in cash and prizes. There are bills from $50 bills, clear up to a $10,000 bill. There's a $5,000 bill. There's a $1,000 bill. There are bills with new cars on them, all kinds of exciting prizes. In fact, Jim, tell us about some of the prizes that Arisha Stanton will be looking for today. Arisha, you could win a full-length mink coat. The elegant touch of class is this natural whitening full-length coat from Dicker & Dicker of Beverly Hills. It's worth over $4,800. Also, a $12,000 South American cruise. Yes, you'll sail aboard a Prudential Cruises Santa Liner to Mexico, the Caribbean, and South America. Enjoy uncrowded luxury and personal service. Also, there's a Mercedes-Benz, a brand new 280S with air, power sunroof, cruise control, and leather interior from Eurocars of Hawaii Limited. It's worth over $16,000. See, you're in the health food business, right? You, you can sell health food out of the back seat of your new car. Oh, that, boy. Won't that be nice? Yeah. Now, here's the way we're going to do it. You'll have 15 seconds to grab as many bills as you can that are in the air. You can't bend over and pick them up off the ground. You can't trap them against your body. And you've got to grab them right out of the air. Okay. At the end of 10 seconds' time, I will give you a five-second warning, which means if you have any bills in your hand, stuff them in the bag real quick, because at the end of 15 seconds, we're only interested in those bills that are actually inside your treasure bag. When you come out, we'll pull out a maximum of 10 bills, and we'll play another game that'll be kind of fun for you. I must remind you, there are $1 bills in there, and you don't want to grab any $1 bills if you can help it. So, Jay Nelson, Arisha Stanton is ready to enter Diamond Head, and while she's going inside there, Jim Thompson will tell us about another prize. Well, there's a boat, the Guppy 13, designed for family fun. Handles easily, cabin sleep too, with cockpit, storage compartments, and self-riding features, complete with custom design Guppy trailers. Are you ready, young lady? Are you excited? Yes, you are. Look at her. Okay, now here's the way it's going to work. You can't start until I say, ready, go. And you must stop when you hear this sound. Can you hear that sound? Once again, I'll remind you, at the end of 10 seconds, I'll give you a five-second warning. So, Arisha Stanton, if you're ready, let's fire up Diamond Head. Cross your fingers. Good luck to you. Release the bills. Ready, go. There's your five-second warning. Five seconds. Drop those bills. Jay Nelson, take off her treasure bag, bring her out here, and let's see what she has inside. Okay, can you just walk down here? Jane, if you bring Arisha with you. And we're gonna take a look and see what she has inside her treasure bag. And Arisha, can I have that? Would you give that to me? Do you hate to give that up? Let's put it right here, and now we're going to play a fun game, because I'll be drawing up to a maximum of 10 bills, one bill at a time. Every bill I draw out, Arisha, will be yours to keep, no matter what happens, unless a $1 bill comes up. If a $1 bill comes up, you have to give me all the bills that you've pulled out of your treasure bag to that point. So if you're ready, let's get started, and let's reach right now and pull out your first bill. And here comes the first bill I have in my hand. It's a $100 bill. There, that $100 belongs. Isn't this nice? Now remember, if a $1 bill comes out, then you'll have to uh, give that $100 back to me. So anytime you want to stop, you simply say, I don't want to see that bill, I want to stop right now. So let's pull out the next one. You want to see this one? The next one's a $100 bill. Look what you've got. You've got $200 and we're really on our way. Here comes another bill right now. Let's see what this bill happens to be. You want to see this one? I'll give you a chance to stop if you want to stop. You want to take this yeah. bill, all right? You've got another $100. Now you've got $300 in your hand. Isn't this fun? We're just making money. And I'll pull out another bill. The next bill I have in my hand, it could be a $1 bill or it could be a new car. You want to see this? Yeah. You want to see this one? Yeah. It's a $100 gift certificate. You now have $400 in cash and prizes in your hand. And we're going to pull out the next bill. Remember, we're pulling out a maximum of 10 bills. Okay, I've got another one right here. I've got another bill in my hand. Here again, I'll give you the opportunity to stop or to go on, whatever you want to do. 
You want to go on? Okay. You've just won a beautiful swivel chair. There's a prize for you. The chair belongs to you. Now, you've got a swivel chair and $400 in cash and prizes, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now. I've got your next bill in my hand, the next bill in my hand. I will give you this opportunity. If you want to stop, I'll give you a quadraphonic stereo. A quadraphonic stereo with an eight-track player. I'll give that to you, plus the chair you've got, plus the $400 in cash and prizes, and you can go home. Or you can see this next bill, which I have in my hand, which might be a $1 bill or a $10,000 bill. Now, what do you want to do? Take you want to take this? You've just won a beautiful camera, Richie. That belongs to you. Now you've got a chair, a camera, $400 in cash and prizes. We've seen six bills so far. We're going to see three more bills. I'll reach in here, and I'll pull out your next bill. I've got your next bill in my hand right now. Richie, you want to stop, or do you want to go on? If it's a $1 bill, you give all that back to me. If it's not, well, who knows? I want to go on. She wants to see the next bill. There is a beautiful dinette set. That belongs to you. You pulled out all kinds of fine prizes. Now we're going to pull out two more, three more bills. So we're going to pull out a maximum of 10 bills. So I'll reach in there. I'll pull out the next bill right now. Okay, you've got a dinette set, a camera, a chair, $400 in cash and prizes. Jane Nelson, come down here with me. Because Jane has something in her bag right now. Now remember, if what I have in my hand is a $1 bill, you'll have to give everything back to me. I will make this kind of offer to you. You can take what Jane Nelson has inside her treasure bag, plus what you have in your hand, and you can go home, or you can see this next bill. If it's a $1 bill, you lose everything, but it could be a new car. It's up to you. What do you want to do? You want to see this bill right here, Jane Nelson? What did you have inside your treasure bag? Jane had some oh. poker chips, and those poker chips are no good in Hawaii, but in Las Vegas, Nevada, they're great. And that's where you would have gone. Jim, tell her about it. Yes, it was a week's vacation at the Sahara Hotel worth a thousand rooms. Don the Beachcomber Restaurant, the Congo Room, with stars like Buddy Hackett, Johnny Carson, 18-hole golf course, as well as continual lounge entertainment. Okay, a Las Vegas trip is what you've turned down. You have in your hand a dinette set, a camera, a chair, $400 in cash and prizes. Let's see if what you turned down was worth it because, Arisha, in my hand, in my hand is a $1 bill. Arisha, you should have stopped. That means you've got to give all of that back to me. However, you did win a sailboat. You won $150. Don't cry on your trip up there. You're making me feel bad now. So you want an excess of $350. Jane, come down here. Oh, I hate to take this back from you, but Arisha, we've had fun playing the game with you today. This is Bob Eubanks on behalf of Jane Nelson, hoping that you and some other lucky travelers will once again join us when we play the Diamond Head game. Aloha, everybody, and bye-bye. Some of the travel arrangements are furnished by Continental Airlines. Put yourself in a something good. Continental DC-10 to Hawaii, your choice of data departure. Through your travel agent or Continental Airlines, we do move our tail for you. Some of our audience members will receive AC Delco to Tune Up America, quality parts for your car, AC spark plugs, AC oil and air filters, and Delco points and condenser. Also, aerosol spray the easy way with spray paints from Plastic Coat for the future sulfurs for the home, car, boat, yard equipment, and hobbies. Also, Charm Goet, completely portable gas grill that goes anywhere, camping, beach, patio, or poolside, instant plane without starter foods or charcoal, Charm Glow products, and Thompson's Water Sealer to protect your home, waterproof concrete, wood, fabric, leather, canvas, and shingles. It's easy, safe, and economical Thompson's Water Seal. Also, Ditto of California. Feel the fit, the hottest jeans in the country. Ditto fit is unique. Every pair is hand-measured. High-risers, banana pants, and quick drawers. Additional fee and or prizes furnished by E.A. Thompson, Lockley, and Sahara Hotel. Announced prices and models of automobiles may be changed due to availability. The price of the Toyota does not include tax and license. Airfare to Las Vegas is based on high jet economy, Los Angeles departure. Hotel accommodations are limited to certain months in availability. The cost for the cruise is based on a tour price and is available only during certain months.
It's time to spice up your Saturday with Game Show Saturday Night. Tonight, spouses share secrets on the newlywed game. What would be the name of a brand new movie based on the way you usually treat your wife? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Let's see. Well, judging from the way she is, has her quick, fiery Latin tem temper, I would say that I treat her with great patience and understanding. With great you patience have to say and a movie. understanding. That's All a right. movie. Patience and understanding. Fine. She thought you'd say. <laughs> she thought you'd say, uh, "Live and let die." Live and let die. What in the world can that? What are you doing right now? I'm dying here. <laughs> you can always expect the unexpected on the Newlywed Game. some heated competition today as we welcome back four of your favorite couples who have played the newlywed game before but failed to win the grand prize. Now we'll be meeting them all once again right after this message. Stay tuned for more of Game Show Saturday Night. This weekend, Game Show Network presents Black and White Sunday Night. First, mystery guests Stan Musial and Steve Allen appear on What's My Line. Then Gloria and Jimmy Stewart try to solve the puzzle on Password. Black and White Sunday Night, every week at 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Eastern. With the wise secluded safety off stage, it's time for some five-point questions. As you know, gentlemen, you'll be answering these questions as you predict your wife will answer the same question when she returns. Now, if her answer matches your prediction, you'll chalk up five points towards a grand prize selected especially for you. So listen carefully, gentlemen. Remember, each question is worth five points. Each correct prediction brings you closer to your exciting grand prize. And here's question one. Gentlemen, will your wife say you or she last made the other jealous? Rob? Oh, you got to start with me. Oh. Uh, I think I probably made her jealous. You made her jealous, Yeah, jealous? she's that way. Oh, I know, I did. You did? Yeah, because I, I, I have to look at every fine woman walking down the street, so she had to get jealous. Yeah, okay. Hey, Peter? <laughs> uh, I believe I made her jealous. You made her yes, jealous, Yes, I huh? work with a couple of ladies down at the office, and she kind of oh. questions our relationship. How could she do that to you, Peter? Very easily. She says, Peter, where have you been? I see. What have you been doing? Ron? Uh, I'd say it had to be me. Because every time I'm watching TV, for instance, she have a nice commercial, you know, a beautiful blonde. Yes. She puts her hands over my eyes so I can't even see the girl on the commercial. Huh. Next question, gentlemen. What will your wife say was the last thing she managed to eat all of without offering you some? Joe? Oh, that, um, well, I, probably the greens. She really loved greens. She and ate like, all the greens without right, offering you some. Right, you know, like, some. like, we went to her parents' house one time, and like, uh, they had greens, and like, you know, she just... That's all, Mom, okay. Got Peter? them all up. I'd say a cake. She, she baked ate a all cake. the cake and didn't yes, offer you. Yes, I can't keep her away from Fine. cake. Ron? I'd have to say it'd have to be steak. She ate all the steak and didn't offer you any? No. Rob? Guacamole. She's a guacamole fanatic. So am I. Yeah, but she ate all I the was, guacamole and yeah, didn't offer you Yeah, I was a little late getting there and, you know. Guacamole gone, right. Yeah, Last one, five point questions. Gentlemen, how will your wife say you would complete this sentence? This is you talking. On our honeymoon, my wife was the star of a soap opera entitled what? On our honeymoon, Peter, my wife was the star of a soap opera entitled what? The Rossies go to Hawaii. The Rossies go to Hawaii, right? right. Uh, I'd say you had to say pain for the night. Pardon me? Pain for a night. <laughs> oh. Rob? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, geez. The edge of night. The edge of night. Yeah. Okay. Joe? Sleep now and catch you later. We'll be right back. We'll reunite our couples. We'll see how well the husbands have predicted what their wives will say right after these messages. Chip. Hey, I'm Todd, here to bring the long-awaited guy's point of view to this show. I'm Teresa, here to keep him in check. We'll answer your letters and emails. And watch some great relationship game shows. Lover's Lounge, today, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. 
Okay, gentlemen, we recorded your predictions on cards and now have them in your laps. Every time that your prediction matches your wife's answer, you'll be given five points. And then the one couple with the most points at the end of the show will win a grand prize selected especially for them. It's reunion day. If you recognize the couples, they were here once before and they're back again trying to win the grand prize this time. And here's our first question. Girls, did you or did your husband last make the other jealous? Marie? Um... He made me jealous. He made you jealous. Well, you know why? Because no. he always looks at all these broads, and you know, they have the long hair. Yes. And you know, he told me to get my hair cut. Right. You know, and now he looks at them when they're long. Oh, when okay. my hair was long, he didn't Ron care. Ron said he that, uh, top card, he did. He made you jealous. That's right. He did. <laughs> all right, Corey? It's, uh, it's got to be that he made me jealous. He made you jealous. Let's because see what he said. He said that he made you jealous. <laughs> <laughs> It has to be that he made me jealous because that's why he's married now. He made you jealous. All right. <laughs> that's all right. He's right. A, he made you jealous. Oh. <laughs> Celeste? He made me jealous. He made you jealous. Yeah, I'm always asking him what girls he saw at school. He still all goes right. to school and I He don't. said that uh, to, he did. He made you jealous. Yeah, jealous. jealous. Okay, next question, girls. Tell me, what was the last thing you managed to eat all of without offering your husband some? What was the last thing, Corey, you managed to eat all of without offering your husband some? It's got to be a cake. A cake? I'm a he cake said it freak. has to be a cake. That's right. <laughs> Barbara? The last thing, it was, it was something because, oh, what was that? It was something because I sat there and ate it all, and he said, why couldn't you give me some? It was something sweet. What would it be? It was something sweet. Oh, late. yeah. Something sweet. He says, why didn't you give me... Sweet? Sounds like what? It was something sweet. It was sweet. something sweet. <laughs> what was it? Oh, oh, you can't... We can't say that on TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 um... Only Billy Graham can do that, you see? <laughs> Hurry, please. <laughs> well, say something. Cake. Cake. He said it was greens. Greens. That's, that's what it was. Celeste. Celeste. Um. Wow. I always eat everything, and he doesn't eat too much. I would have to say. The last thing was the tacos that we had Tacos. Today, the he tortillas. said that you ate all the guacamole, guacamole and didn't oh, leave him any. That. Yes, Marie? Oofy. It would have Oofy. to be. We have this almost every night. Yes. You better get this right. right. Macaroni and cheese. Oh, congratulations. He said the steak. The steak? What <laughs> steak did we eat? When did we eat steak last? That must have been months ago I before we were married. The... Macaroni Ron. and cheese with you, remember? Yes, but I ate it all. We didn't have steak. We have macaroni and cheese every night. I know, because I'm... Uh, I... well, Last I'm, of our five-point questions. Oh. Girls, how did your husband complete this sentence? He said, on our honeymoon, my wife was the star of a soap opera entitled what? On our honeymoon, my wife was the star of a soap opera entitled what, Barbara? God, I'm so nervous. My face is shaking. Um... Soap opera entitled what? Hurry, please. Well, I would assume it's one that we watch. I say, All My Children. All My Children. He said, Sleep Now and Catch You Later. There's no, there's no soap box opera called Sleep Now and Catch You Later. He said, You were the star of what soap box opera? Haven't you ever now, watched Sleep Now and Catch You Later? It's now, no but, but wait, but wait, but wait, wait. We, we were on our honeymoon. That night, you said, Hey, you know, I'm tired. That's not the point. That's not the point. No, no, no. no, no. It don't have to be the, the name of a soap opera. What, what channel is Sleep Now and Catch You Later on? There's no soap box opera called Get Sleep Now and Catch You Later Shoe. There should be. Oh. Celeste? <laughs> I'll say, uh, we're not soap opera freaks. I'd have to say Welcome. Days of Our Lives. Days That's of Our Lives. He said oh, it's the edge of night. You Marie, know how we look the forward to the night. night. Oh, how you look oh, forward to the night. We don't watch soap operas either. Because I work all day, you know, and I can't get those things oh. in. And any, they're, they're boring anyway. Um, I'd say, well, right. I don't even know them all. Um, I'd say all my children. All my children. He said, discomfort for a night. Why did you ever, discomfort for a night? And he said, who would ever name a song for discomfort? Our honeymoon, I know, but Ron, uh, you... Corey? Oh. Well, it's got to be a famous Channel 7 one, General Hospital. I threw up the whole way through General Hospital. Hospital. He said it had to be the Rossies go to Hawaii. 
Oh! oh. Yeah. That's the way it was in Jack. We'll be back with a live. We'll see how well they predict what the husbands will say on the newlywed game in just a moment. But first, here's Johnny Jenkins with good news about gifts for today's alumni couple. Thank you, Bob, for the alumni wives we have. Town and Country Tableware by Washington Forge with beautiful Fleetwood handle, handles, mirror bright stainless steel, their dishwasher safe. And they'll enjoy the robust taste of rye and crisp snack crackers. Perfect taste complement for cheeses, spreads, and dips. Tastefully rye crisp. They'll also receive the Hoover Electric Fondue, the party favorite. Doubles as a mini fry pan, saucepan, or bean pot. Thermostatically controlled heat from Hoover. For the husbands, we have Smith Corona's Figuramatic 708 that adds, subtracts, and multiplies electrically. Lightweight, portable, modern in design for home or office from Smith Corona. They'll also enjoy having a brother portable typewriter with full office keyboard, two color ribbon, stencil position, and automatic repeat spacer from Brother International. Our second place winners will enjoy the wet look from Costco. Beautifully styled table and chairs that fold and store easily. Remember, you can count on Costco for quality. Now back to Bob Eubanks and the newlywed game. <laughs> All right, John, thank you. Now, ladies, it's your turn to predict what your husbands will say. And remember, each of these questions will now be worth 10 points. So here's question one. Girls, how will your husband say you would complete this sentence? This is you talking. If my husband found Aladdin's lamp, he undoubtedly... He'd undoubtedly waste one of his wishes by asking for what? He would undoubtedly waste one of his wishes by asking for what, Barbara? Oh, wow. If he found Aladdin's lamp, he'd waste one of his wishes by asking for what? Um, it would be a waste, huh? Hurry, please. Uh... Money. Asking it's for money, waste, all right, Corey? Money. money. It's got to be it. Number Marie, one. Marie, he would waste one of his wishes. It'd before. have to be airplanes, because that's all he does work on is model airplanes. But asking for a model airplane. Yeah, it'd be a big waste, because he's got so many of them now. He doesn't yes. know what to do with them, but he'd still ask for it, because right. that's what kind of fool he is. Yeah. I mean, he really would, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. You better, yeah, you can count on it. Uh, Just I will. wait. I'll you, count he'll on say that. it. You watch. He'll say what? He'll say airplanes. Oh, airplanes. Yes, Celeste? A ski boat. A ski boat. Yeah, he knows we can't afford it, but sure. he wants one, and all our friends want one. Okay, fine. Next question, girls. What two colors will your husband say he most likes to wear together? And remember, your answers must match exactly. Please keep that in mind. They have to match exactly. Corey? I would say probably blue and like a wine or a maroon. Now, which one do you want to say? Well, that's the same thing. Just I know, but they must match exactly, you see. Oh, wow. Uh, blue. Blue and... Wine. Blue and wine, Marie. Have to be blue and navy blue. He has a lot of brown clothes, but he likes blue and navy blue. He has to say navy blue now. Blue and yeah, navy blue. Yeah, blue and navy blue. Right. All right, fine. Celeste? I would say uh, brown and beige. Brown and beige. Mm -hmm. Barbara? Um, it has to match exactly. Yes. Not the colors, but the, the words. Oh, the words. Yeah. It could be vice versa. Yeah, right. You know. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. I know it's gold. Gold and? Brown. Gold and brown, all right. Last of our 10-point questions, girls. What creature will your husband say he would be on a merry-go-round of marriage? What creature would he be on a merry-go-round of marriage, Marie? It'd have to be Dracula, because he's always attacking my neck. He's a neck person. No, I have, I, 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 that's why I'm wearing turtleneck. You should see all the marks. <laughs> He'd be Dracula. Yes, have to be Dracula. Yeah. What are you looking for, Celeste? An answer. <laughs> um, what creature? What creature would he be on a merry-go-round of marriage? Merry-go-round of marriage. I would have to say Dracula he too would be for Dracula. the same reason. Already. Attacks my neck and my and my. <laughs> Barbara. Um, I'd say Dracula because I love to watch Dracula. I just love him. Dracula. Yes, Dracula. Corey. I would say a cat. He'd be a cat. Right, because he's a Leo. Oh. He's a cat. 25-point bonus question, girls. What will your husband say is the size of the TV screen he watches most often at home? And again, your answers must match exactly. Celeste? 23. 23. Barbara? It's a 12. 12. Corey? A 21. A 21, Marie. It better be a 19, because that's all we got. <laughs> then it better be 19. Yeah. We'll be right back with the husbands, and we'll compare answers on the newlywed game in just a moment. Stay tuned. The night's still young on Game Show Saturday Night. All right, now, gentlemen, let's see how well your wives have predicted what you will say. And remember, these questions will now be worth 10 points. So here's question number one. Gentlemen, how did your wife complete this sentence? She said, 
If my husband found Aladdin's lamp, he'd undoubtedly waste one of his wishes by asking for what? Now, Peter, if you found Aladdin's lamp, you'd undoubtedly waste one of your wishes by asking for what? Well, I don't know if it would be a waste, but uh, I'd ask Aladdin to remove some of the excess weight from my wife's body. <laughs> oh, no. Well, then you ain't going to get any money, brother. <laughs> Money, she thought I'm you'd sorry. say. Joe, you'd undoubtedly waste one of your wishes by asking for what? Most likely, uh... <laughs> a divorce? <laughs> a divorce! <laughs> hey, is she mad? Now, what do you love? Money, boy! Money! Money! Oh, uh, that, that was good, but you know what? What did I tell you the other day? That you were ignorant, didn't I? Didn't I, didn't I tell you that? I said, if, if you won, you know, you wouldn't be with me. I wanted to be yours. I tell you that all the time. Forget my, I love money, yeah. Rob? Yeah, I'll have to go along with the money. Definitely. You, you'd ask for money. Oh, Rob, what did yeah, we go the bucks. last weekend to see? Rob. Who cares about money if we have a boat? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, if I had money, God, we could buy a Rob. ski boat. No, but if we... We don't want money. No. Money to buy a ski boat. Just enough to buy a ski boat, not extra money. Well, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rod? I'd say it had to be long hair again. Oh, you'd, you'd waste one of your wishes and you'd ask for long hair? Yeah, for Marie. Oh, for her. Oh, oh okay. Ronald! Oh, Ronald! What do you think I always think is a waste? A model airplane. Your model airplanes. You're for, I always think your model airplanes are a waste. Always. How many does he have? Oh, good Lord. I mean, where do you want me to begin? I mean, he's crashed about five of them, and he's, he has about ten more of them, and, and about five he hasn't built yet. Huh. You know, one of those radio control do-jobbies? Oh, yeah, I wrote on you one know, of them. You know, yeah, and he always... <laughs> yeah, do I mean, he's constantly buying them. Let's move on rapidly. Gentlemen, tell me, what two colors, what two colors do you most like to wear together? And remember, your answers must match exactly. Please keep that in mind. They must match exactly. What two colors do you most like to wear together? And Joe, we'll start with you. Oh, oh, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Hurry, please. I like a lot of colors. <laughs> what two uh, colors? I'll, I'll say gold and gold and, and brown. Barbara, whatever you do. <laughs> Rob? Wow, well, I've got a lot of stuff that's blue. Blue is my favorite color. Blue was, and? When I wear blue, I usually wear two things that are blue, like blue and light blue. Is that, is that your answer? Blue and light blue? Yeah, dark All right. blue and light she blue. She said it would be uh, brown and beige. My favorite color is blue, but I was going by what you wore today, because you wear lots of brown and beiges. Well, that's true. I wear a lot of brown and beige. Yeah, she said you wear a lot of brown and beige. <laughs> right? Yeah, well. I'd have to say it would be brown and beige. Brown and beige. She said that you like to wear... Oh! Blue no. and navy blue. You told oh. me your favorite color is blue. And when? when? You told me a long time ago, blue and navy oh. blue, Marie. That's it. I Gosh. love those colors. Just What's the matter, Ron? Brown and just because he What's wears... What's the matter, Ron? Oh, that's bad. Well, that, just I always he... wear brown. Yes, but he, he said his favorite color is blue. And when he says blue, it's blue and navy blue. I can't oh. argue with that. He can't... He's wrong. That's you can it. argue with anything, Marie. Oh, I well, let me tell that. you. I can't, yeah. No. Jeez. Peter? I'll agree, huh? You better. I'll, I'm just going to give two colors okay. and suffer the consequences. All right. Right. <laughs> blue and brown. Blue and brown. She said... Blue and brown? What are you, colored plus? She said it's, <laughs> it's gonna be blue and wine. Here's the last of our 10-point questions. Gentlemen, tell me, what creature would you be on a merry-go-round of marriage? What creature would you be, Rob, on a merry-go-round of marriage? Oh, wow. Uh... Well, let me see. Who's that? A wolf. A wolf? Yeah. She said Close. you would be... Dracula. Dracula. Close. What's, what's Dracula? I mean, what's with Dracula? <laughs> oh, yeah, well... <laughs> family show. Ron? I'd say you have to be wolf. Wolf. She said you would be Dracula. Ron, 
strong. You always want Dracula, and you always attack me as if you are one. Oh, Marie. Why do you think I look so thin? You're draining me. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, man. Well, it's true. Uh, hey, Peter, you know, what do you think? A lion. A lion? She said you would be a cat. It's in the cat family. Wrong. Judges? Oh, the judge says right? That's right. Thank you, Judge. What are you laughing at, Joe? <laughs> I'm waiting for my turn. <laughs> it's your turn. Well, uh, actually, I don't like monsters myself. What but, creature uh, would you be? But really, um, yes, she's she loves that blood sucker named Dracula. Dracula. I know it has to be Dracula. I okay, mean, but she's it has might to be, wrong, be the card for the play. Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> Five-point bonus question. See which couple will win their grand prize in just a moment. All right, gentlemen, here it is. Your big 25-point bonus question for 25 points. Gentlemen, what is the size of the TV screen you watch most often at home? And remember, your answers must match exactly. Couple one, Ron and Marie with five. 25 will give you 30. Ron? I think it's 19 inch. 19, she said. 19, that's right. Couple number four, Rob and Celeste with five. 25 will give you 30. Rob, what do you say? That's 26 inch. 26, she says it's 23. There's no such thing. Couple TV number two, Peter and Corey with 20. 25 will give you 45. Peter? Big one. 19 inches. 19, she says it's 21. Couple number three, Joe and Barbara with 25. 25 will give you 50. Joe, if you get it right, you're going to be our grand prize winner today. If you miss it, second place. Oh, not again. Oh, uh, 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 uh 11? Eleven. Nine, nine, I know. She says it's... It's not no nine, it's not no eleven. It's twelve. Wow. Couple number one, Ron and Marie, you're our grand prize winner today. And now, Ron and Marie, as today's winners of the New York game, here's the special prize chosen just for you. A fun-filled, beautiful, brand-new, compact camper trailer. <laughs> Yes, Marie and Ron, it's your very own Sherwood Baronet Camper, a proven performer with built-in modern kitchen featuring butane stove, icebox sink, oh, water pump, and 10-gallon tank. The Baronet sleeps five people on thick foam mattresses, and it tows like a shadow. But most important, it can be set up easily any place in seven minutes. Truly camping luxury at its best. And you'll also enjoy these fine bicycles from the famous Beagle Catalog Company with over 50,000 quality items providing value, selection, and savings. Beagle, Chicago, Illinois. And all yours as today's lucky winners of the newlywed game. Ron and Marie, congratulations to you. A couple of thanks for being back with us again. Until next time, Bob, you back saying thank you and goodbye. So you want to play some rock and roll? The first thing you need is a new hairdo. And get a whole new style. Develop bad habits. Oh, and don't forget the music lessons. Of course, you could just tune in and play Rock and Roll Jeopardy on Game Show Network. This game rocks. Weekends at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. to spice up your Saturday with Game Show Saturday Night. Tonight, spouses share secrets on the newlywed game. Gentlemen, the very first time you and your wife necked for more than 10 minutes, was it fall, summer, winter, or spring? First time you necked for more than 10 minutes. It's in the summer. In the summer. 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 Winter. Summer. Remember New Year's night? How could you forget that? Of <laughs> You can always expect the unexpected on the Zulewad game. And now, here's your host, the star of the Zulewad game, Bob Eubanks. Thank you and welcome to our very special holiday charity show on the Zulewad game, because today we're welcoming back four of your favorite alumni couples from the past who will be playing the newlywed game in order to win a very special grand prize for their favorite charity. And the good times will begin right after this message. 
Stay tuned. With the wives so secluded safely off stage, it's time for some five point questions. As you know, gentlemen, you'll be answering these questions. As you predict, your wife will answer the same question when she returns. Now, if her answer matches your prediction, you'll chalk up five points towards a special grand prize for your favorite charity. So listen carefully, gentlemen. Remember, each question is worth five points. Each correct prediction brings you closer to your special grand prize. And here we go with question number one. Gentlemen, will your wife say she last complimented you or complimented your manners, appearance, intelligence, wit, or none of those? Which one did she last compliment, Alan? Well, I'd have to say she uh, complimented my, uh, uh, my intelligence uh, because uh, well, the other night we were, we were coming back through Hollywood from a dinner engagement and, and we were kidding about, uh, uh, kidding about uh, these massage parlors. You were, huh? Yeah, not, I wasn't kidding. She so you was. weren't kidding. No. <laughs> you were dead so she, serious. So she finally agreed, she finally agreed that uh, I could go to one. But the stipulation was that uh, I had to, if I went to a massage parlor and spent $30, yes. she in turn would get to spend $1,000 on clothes. So she complimented your intelligence. Yeah. Sounds to me like a bad deal. Wesley? I want to hear it again. Oh. <laughs> Manners, appearance, intelligence, wit, or none of those? Which one is she last compliment of yours? None of those. No, no, she didn't compliment no, you. No, I, right. I, I always get total okay. criticism. Bob? Man, uh, yeah, yeah uh, it was uh, strictly the last time, right? It was uh, wit, because wit. I okay. come up with the things, no matter how high a seagull may fight, can still break a window with a hammer, and she thought that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice? Appearance. Appearance. Yeah, Next she question, bought gentlemen. Me a new shirt and tie and dressed me up. Oh, okay. What will your wife say is the one word beginning with the first letter of her best girlfriend's first name that best describes your wife's figure? That's kind of confusing, so I'll explain it to you now. Wesley, Vera's best girlfriend's first name, whatever it begins with, come up with a word that begins with that letter that describes your wife's figure. I confused him totally. I'm no, sure you that. didn't. She you got, got two, two really good girlfriends, but since I can't think of a, a, something to describe her with the one girlfriend, I, her figure... Describing your wife's figure now with that one word that begins with the first letter of her best... Well, because of her stomach, I'll have to say jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would that be one or two words, folks? That's two words. New word. Cute with Cute. a K. Cute with a K. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. You know, uh, Bob? Uh, Bob? Oh, uh, you take a nap? Don't take any no, naps. No, no. It's, oh. uh, it's, now, the girlfriend, can I mention her name? Yes, first name. Her girlfriend, Jean. How do you spell it? Uh, Jean. Well, no, but you want the. <laughs> The G is for her, her figure, right? As if it begins with a G, yes. Yeah, Jean is G. So her, it was, it's gorgeous, gorgeous because it used to growl feet. her stomach. So now it's gorgeous. That's part of her figure. Who? That's Stella's. That's my wife. Oh, Stella's your wife. Yeah. Oh, uh, please. <laughs> More. More. More of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh uh, What's so funny, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to say then? Describing Ben's figure with one word. Well, my, my wife's best girlfriend I, is Linda, so right. I'd have to say, uh, and I'll have to say legs, but I'm afraid she won't say legs because I'm always complaining about her legs. But uh, You're going to say legs? I'm going to say legs because that's the, one thing, that's the one thing I'm always complaining about. All right, last of our five-point questions. Legs. Gentlemen, how will your wife say you would complete this sentence? This is you talking. If my wife had my what, she'd be perfect. That's you talking. <laughs> uh, uh, Bob, if your wife had your what, she'd be perfect. <laughs> oh, I'm first. Yeah, yeah, you're first. Every time you get me when I'm first, I don't have time to think. Uh, first time you've been first. Yeah, okay, what I'd say, I, Howard Cressel and I have the same no. thing, the mouth. Oh, oh, if your wife had your mouth, she'd be perfect. Right. Fine. Maurice? Brains. Brains should be perfect. <laughs> Alan? Uh, well, I'll have to say legs again. <laughs>
<laughs> if your wife had your legs, she'd be perfect? Yeah, minus Let me the see your legs. Minus the hair. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> Wesley? Self-control. If your wife had your self-control, she'd be perfect. Gentlemen, yeah. thank you. We'll be right back to reunite our special couples. We'll see how well the husbands have predicted what their wives will say <laughs> right after this message. Okay, gentlemen, we recorded your predictions on cards and now have them in your laps. Every time that your prediction matches your wife's answer, you'll be given five points. Then the one couple with the most points at the end of the show will win that special grand prize for their favorite charity. It's reunion day. Our couples are not playing for themselves today, but they're playing for their favorite charity. And we appreciate very much having you here. Girls, question number one. Did you last compliment your husband on his intelligence, wit, manners, appearance, or none of those? Maud? Well, I think it was on his manners. His manners. He yes. said you complimented him on his appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Stella? I last complimented him on his appearance. Appearance. Oh, he, he so said nice it was... Makeup man he got said, it's my little saying. No it's matter his, how high the seagull may fly, you big window with hammer so and all old. that. They're so old. I hear the same ones over and over. His yeah, wit but it's good. <laughs> Jeez, she it's told. only funny for the first ten times. Right. How many times do you tell me on the wit? Right? You Very keep neat. saying that. Gee, you're smart. Have you ever told him half smart of Alex. that? Huh? He's smart Alex. So oh, I see. Gee. Vera? I haven't complimented him on anything. No. <laughs> that right. uh, None of those. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> moral support and I said his appearance. Appearance? Oh, oh, baby! What? You're wrong. It's his intelligence. It's my intelligence. Why would I compliment the last, your The last time you made that uh, bargain with me, that offer, you know, come back through oh. Hollywood, that was my intelligence. You that knew was I, an you knew insult I, to you your knew, intelligence. No, no, you knew I wouldn't accept it. Next question, girls. What is the one word beginning with the first letter of your best girlfriend's first name? that best describes your figure. In other words, Stella, your best girlfriend's first name, take the letter it begins with and describe your oh figure with one word. Um, uh, jelly? <laughs> jelly, she said, he said it would be gorgeous. Oh. Yeah, but it starts with G. I thought that's what it was. G, Jean, G. J, J. J, J. Oh, J. My spelling shot, no wonder it was a good look. My yeah, intelligence yeah. is shot. Nice shot. Yeah. Oh, no. See, this is, that's pretty difficult because, you know, it's, it's so spectacular. Your figure? Mm hmm Yeah. Let me see. I guess you might say, um, juicy. Ju oh, man. He said it's hot, hot. Hey, look how he's Wait a minute. Cute. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, hold, I didn't know. Hold, I didn't know whether What's your best girlfriend? What's your best girlfriend? It, it could be one or two What's things. What's your best know, girlfriend name? I didn't know whether to say classy uh -uh. or... Uh-uh. What's your best girlfriend or... name? You missed the question. I missed the question. What's your best girlfriend name? I got the question right. What's your best... The, the answer wasn't right. You just didn't put down there what, what? you were supposed Beth? to put down there. Um, I'm not sure which friend, and I'll say phenomenal. Who in the... You have named phenomenal. <laughs> Who's your best girlfriend? I don't know. Who do I think your best girlfriend is? Paula. Paula. Uh, he said legs. Legs for Linda. Oh, legs my figure? Well, that's as close as I could come. <laughs> Maud? Fatima. Fat. Uh, he said it would be more. Why <laughs> so more? I'm enough to say it's all right. Don't you? Oh, it's my friend. Last of my point questions, girls. How did your husband complete this sentence? He said, if my wife had my what, she'd be perfect. If my wife had my what, she'd be perfect. How did he complete that sentence, Vera? If you had his what, you'd be perfect. He'd probably say everything, but I'd say, um... Oh, my goodness. He'd, oh. If you had his, his first, please. Um, looks. Looks. He said, if you had his self-control. Wrong. You know oh. how you always attack people. Self-control? Pe there you go. There it is. There it is. Right I there. see it. There it is. I see it, Wesley. I there see it. it. Uh -huh. She's about to lose it, isn't she? I see it. I, I his self-control is that's ridiculous. That's it. Yeah, I saw it, that's Wesley. It. Uh -uh. I saw it. Wait a minute. Whose side are you on? Oh, his? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take you later. Um... Let me see. If what? you had his what? Uh, he's always complaining, which is why I can't understand his other answer. He doesn't like the shape of my calves. They're too thin. 
So I think he'd like me to have his calves. His calves, all right? He said if you had his well, they legs. You're close. Hey! <laughs> Judge, Judge says that's all right. Hey! Hey, what? without the hair. If you, good luck. Good luck. Sorry, he said if you had his brains, you'd no. be perfect. <laughs> oh, you got no brains, you know. <laughs> I haven't got any gibbs, don't you know? Stella? <laughs> He'll probably say if uh, I had his, um, oh, his wit, you know. Wit. Oh. He said the oh. mouth. Oh, mouth. He said if perfect, you talk, we could sit and talk for hours. <laughs> Please, we could talk and talk. We'll be right back with the wives, and we'll see how well they predict what their husbands will say on the new idea in just a moment. But first, today's winning couples, here's that winning fellow Johnny Jacobs with news about the special gifts that will be donated in their names. John? Thank you, Bob. In the name of today's couples, at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles will receive an assortment of Costco products, including Costco's baby carrier. The sturdy new baby carrier in the morning glory pattern. Remember, you can count on Costco for quality. And the children will love their easy-to-eat bit of chocolate. Six delicious pieces in every bar. Six individual convenient-sized chocolatey chews. Bit of chocolate has real chocolatey taste. And the Children's Hospital will also receive a wardrobe of Spencer's Infants Wear. Everything from creepers to sleeper sacks to suits made in the USA with the highest of standards. Spencer's. And here are Mother Goose Shoes, one of America's fastest growing quality and value brands for shoes. Mother Goose Shoes for growing feet. In the name of our second place winning couple, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles will receive this fine color television set from the famous Spiegel Catalog Company with over 50,000 quality items providing value selection and savings. Spiegel, Chicago, Illinois. And from the famous Tappan full line of kitchen appliances. They'll also receive the new Tappan three-door refrigerator freezer, two separate freezer sections, newly designed interiors, roll-out wheels, Tappan, kitchen appliances, and easy to watch. Now back to Bob Eubanks and today's winning alumni couple. All right, John, thank you very much. Now, ladies, it's your turn to predict what your husbands will say. And remember, each of these questions will now be worth 10 points. Question one, girls, what will your husband say is his favorite place to dream about? And be specific, Stella. His favorite place to dream about? Um... Oh, gee whiz. Maybe Hawaii. He's Hawaii. Uh, that's specific about. enough, judges? Just Hawaii? Oh. Okay, Mon? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Ben? <laughs> uh, anywhere that there's a boat race going on. Where would on. that be? Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu. Bear, I'm on your side Las now. Ve oh, you are? Yes. <laughs> um, probably Las Vegas. Las Vegas. All right, last of our 10 point questions. Girls, think carefully. What will your husband say was the last thing he did in bed that usually is done outdoors? The last thing he did in bed, Maud, that is usually done outdoors? Well, I would say snore because it does a lot of that, but that wouldn't be outdoors, no, maybe. No, wouldn't. Uh, uh, riding a bicycle. He rode a bicycle in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that keeps a guy from walking in his sleep. <laughs> then, <doesn't it? laughs> Bev? Oh. <laughs> I'd, he snores so loud he should be in a barn, so I'll say snoring. He snored in bed. Hmm. Vera, last thing he did in bed he should have done outdoors everything but um um probably wrestled he wrestled mm -hmm. he does that a lot he does mm -hmm. <laughs> stella well the thing my husband does in bed that he should do outdoors he won't believe because he wrestles with our dog in bed but he thinks our dog is his son so he doesn't think it he should wrestled be with the dog in bed. in bed right no kidding no kidding. 25 point bonus question, girls. In what month will your husband say you and he went to a beach together for the first time? In what month did you and he go to a beach together for the first time? Bev? I'm, it was a long time ago. I think it was probably August. August. Vera? Uh, probably, let's see, it has to be during the summer. Probably June. June. Stella? I'll say July. July. Maud? November. November. Ladies, thank you very much for your answers. Back with the husbands to compare answers on the newlywed game in just a moment. Uh, now, gentlemen, let's see how well your wives have predicted what you will say. And remember, these questions will now be worth 10 points. Here's question one. Gentlemen, what is your favorite place to dream about? And be specific. Wesley, what's your favorite place to dream about? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Las she said Vegas. it would be I love Las Vegas. Vegas. I love I love Vegas. Vegas. That's good. Alan, what's your favorite place to dream about? Well, I dream all the time, and about the only thing I really dream about is boat. What's your favorite place? Place? The river. What river? Colorado River. Colorado River. <laughs> she said it's Lake Havasu. <laughs> it's right. 
<laughs> I mean, it's on the river. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask the judges about that? <laughs> You want me to ask the judge something? Yeah. What do you want me to ask him? Well, that has to be right because, like, judge, the lady says room. that has to be right. Now, what do you say, judge? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't right. Oh, well. well, we meant the same. Maurice? Uh, Ada, Oklahoma. Ada, Oklahoma. Yeah, that's where I met her. <laughs> Is that where you met her? And yeah. you dream about it? Yeah. What was she oh, doing yeah. when you met her? Oh, she called me up and asked me for a date. Oh, no, no, no there was, don't believe it. Don't believe no, it. No, there was a, another lady there that we knew, both knew. She, yes. Yeah. And Blind she date was from California. Oh, I see. And she said your favorite place to dream about, Maurice, is a uh, top card for me, please. Hang on to the other one. That's the one, right? Mm -hmm. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> dream about. <laughs> Huh, Bob? It's beautiful. You let me go forth. It gave me time to think. And nothing goes through my mind until they said Las Vegas. 7 Eleven. Go get Las it. Vegas. She said, You love to gamble in Hawaii. Oh. Las Vegas. 7 Eleven. Seven. Vegas all the time. You just dream yeah, about yeah. Hawaii. Oh, jeez. Hey, here, here's Vegas. The, I got another question here. For me or what? Oh, for all of you. Oh. <laughs> you ready? Here it is. For 10 points, gentlemen. What was the last thing you did in bed that usually is done outdoors? Oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, Alan, let's start with you this time. <laughs> the last thing you did in bed that's usually done outdoors? And this well, show can be canceled, you know? <laughs> well, uh, before we were married, it was always done outdoors. <laughs> How come you're not laughing now, Alan? <laughs> it's What's not going to be done anywhere anymore. <laughs> What's your answer? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I can't take that one. You Give me another one. Gee whiz. Oh, yeah. There's only one other thing, is sleep. <laughs> sleep, all right. She said it was, uh, you snored. <laughs> I couldn't say it either. <laughs> Is he always in a bad mood like this? Yeah, most of the time. Maurice? Hug her up tight. You what? <laughs> hug her up tight. You hug her oh, up tight. Oh, that, that's not outdoors. Well, I mean, places. it should be outdoors. <laughs> she well, said the last thing you did in bed, you should have done out. You rode a bicycle in bed. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know when he's riding a bicycle uh, or snoring uh, or hugging up. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know? <laughs> he doesn't know there's between riding no, a bicycle and hugging up? <laughs> doesn't have any points. Uh, <laughs> oh, Stella? No, Bob. <laughs> I'm Bob. I'm Bob. I'm Bob. <laughs> okay, Bob. I'm glad you gave me lots of time. I, I, gave, you, I gave you three husbands right, and Right, that's wife. beautiful. That's what I love about you. Give me that fourth chance. So I, I can't really say it. So the only thing I can say with my wits are shot is the perfect execution, ex the perfect execution of my body. <laughs> I chased you her in chased the house. Her. She said what yeah. she did was you wrestled. This is bad. You don't, you don't wrestle outside. Back to the 25-point bonus question to see which couple will win their grand prize for the charity in just a moment. Stay tuned. Game show Saturday night's coming right back. All right, gentlemen, here it is. A big 25-point bonus question for 25 points. Gentlemen, in what month did you and your wife go to a beach together for the first time? Couple one, Maurice and Maude, was zero. 25, I'll give you 25, Maurice. That was in February. February. She said it was in the month of November. Couple number two, Bob and Stella, was zero. 25, I'll give you 25, Bob. Never. 
Never. No, we haven't been to the Never. beach. Never. She no. said it was the month of July. Couple number four. Alan and Bev with 525 and give you 30. Alan? I have to say June. June. She said the month of August. We Couple number three. Wesley and Vera. 1525 and give you 40. Wesley? July. July. She oh, said it was the month of <laughs> June. But you've got 15 points. So Wesley and Vera, you're our grand prize winners today. for you. We know that in keeping with the holiday spirit, you've asked us to donate your grand prize to your favorite charity, the City of Hope. And that means that they'll be receiving in your name a check for $1,000. Before we close, I want to thank all of our special couples for coming down to be with us today for playing the newlywed game, not for themselves, but for their charity. Now, on behalf of our entire staff and crew, let us take this opportunity to wish you a very happy holiday. So you want to play some rock and roll. The first thing you need is a new hairdo. And get a whole new style. Develop bad habits. Oh, and don't forget the music lessons. Of course, you could just tune in and play Rock and Roll Jeopardy on Game Show Network. This game rocks. Weekends at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. The Dooleywed Game is a Chuck Ferris production. Okay. And the name of the show, Oddball Pilot Number 1, VTR 2186, Director Mark Breslow, we go! Hi, I'm Jamie Farr, and we're here to play Oddball. Let's meet the Oddball. From 227, Mother Gibbs. From Too Close for Comfort, Lydia Cornell. From Mama's Family, Vicki Lawrence. From Fall Guy, Nidra Bulls. And the men. From Happy Days, Anson Williams. From New Heart, Tom Poston. From Falcon Crest, Daniel Green. And Dick Martin. And here is the Chief Oddball, Jamie Farr! <laughs> You're too kind. You're just too kind. That's very nice. Very, very nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Oddball, the game where it pays to be different. And I ought to know because I've been paid different all my life. Let's go talk to the Lady Oddballs. Hello, Lady Oddballs. Hi, Hi Ma. Oddball boss. Marla, I know you're enjoying 227. Yes. But do you, do you, tell me honestly, do you miss the Jeffersons? Well, I stuffed the shrimp and put him in the oven. So I still have him with, him, with me, actually, on the deep freeze. You're talking about Sherman? You talking about Sherman. <laughs> We better go talk to the gentlemen oddballs. Hello, gentlemen oddballs. Hello, Hello sir. Hello, gentlemen, sir. Oddball master. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oddball master. Anson, yes, you got sir. a new project. Please tell me about it. Well, it's a film for PBS Wonderworks called The Lone Star Kid. Had the opportunity to direct that, and it's on uh, a week from Monday, 8 o'clock. Good luck to you. Thank you. It's time to meet your teammates for today. Open Sesame. Lady Oddballs, this is your teammate, Oddball. Her name is Nancy Carr. Please tell us something about yourself. Well, I'm a, um, my name is Nancy Carr. I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm a bilingual junior high school teacher. Buenos dias, Nancy. Buenos dias. 
You speak French. I didn't know you spoke French. Gentlemen, your teammate is Randy Economy, and yes. I promise you, I will not. You must be tired of those, those oh, last name jokes. So I have heard I'll, I'll them leave all. You alone. So, I've heard them all. Well, what's the funniest you've heard, Randy? Uh, the nation's economy must be bad, so uh, how's the local economy doing? I've heard them all. I mean, anything with economy. Well, just... tell us about yourself. My name is Randy Economy. I'm a native of Southern California. <laughs> like Seems I said, I just heard that someplace. <laughs> I'm a native of Southern California. I own my own political consulting firm, and uh, it's really great to be here. Well, good luck to both Thank of you. Thank you. Celebrities. You're going to communicate a person, a place, or a thing to your respective partners by writing down a one-word clue. But here's the catch. Ah! Yes, there's always a catch to something. Oh, always a catch. Yeah. If your clue is duplicated by anyone else on either team, that clue is knocked out of play. In other words, it's eliminated. So you've got to really think like an oddball. All right, we're going to start with a challenger today. And the challenger is you, Nancy. And this is the $100 subject. <coughs> Kindly retire to the soundproof Adios, room Nancy. and be very careful. All right? Adios, soundproof. <laughs> As you can see, I never get too close to that soundproof door. <laughs> All right, now they're sealed. They cannot hear what we're going to say. Celebrities, prepare to write down your one word clue to this subject. Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva. The subject is worth $100 to the player who gets it. And remember, try to come up with a unique clue. All clues that are duplicated will be eliminated. Okay, all the lights are on. That means they finished writing down their one word clues. We're going to start with the ladies. Marla, your one word clue for Lady Godiva. Well, I thought that she probably did this. She took a ride. Lydia, your one word clue. She covered herself completely in her hair. <laughs> Vicky? This is very chic. She was an equestrian. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those college graduates. <laughs> Nidra, your one word clue. So I'll start out in the bottom here. Hair. Hair. That's a duplication. Lydia and Nidra, you have been knocked out of place. Discard your card. Hold on to them for a while. I'm sorry, Lady Godiva lost her hair. That's going to be very embarrassing. All right, so we have equestrian and ride remaining. However, however, the gentleman could duplicate you and you could be eliminated from the play. Anson, what is your one word clue for uh, Lady Godiva? Well, I heard she got a little fat by eating too much chocolate. Ah. Uh, brand name. Yeah. Brand name. Right. Um, uh, I said that she she had forgotten something. I, she took off all her clothes to make that. Uh, that I see. She's, she's from the south. This lady could die. She's naked. Yes, yeah, so she's <laughs> naked. I see. All right. Fine. She she was riding. She was uh, well. She was bare back and bare front. Right. So it didn't matter which way she was heading, south or north. You could see everything. All right. Daniel. This is an odd one. Ancient, because she's before my time. <laughs> Dick? Well, actually, mine is a... Uh, a lot of people don't know that bareback is, is a one word. A lot of people don't know that. Do I? Yes, yes, they do. Our, our judges know that. Oh, right, they know that. that. Bareback, yeah, the, mm, ancient, bare is naked acceptable? Naked? <laughs> naked? <laughs> and cho chocolate, naked, ancient, bareback. That's going to throw them, I think. And we have equestrian and ride. All right. Kindly hide your clues. Hide your clues. Thank you. Remember, the subject is Lady Godiva. Let's bring back your teammates. Nancy, Randy, we we'll start with you, Nancy. The subject is worth $100. As you can see, two of your oddballs have been knocked out of play, Lydia and Nidra. However, Marla and Vicky remain. Marla, your one-word clue. Ride. Vicky? Equestrian. Equestrian ride for $100. Is it a horse? No, it is not a horse. Hold on to those clues. Okay. They may help you, Randy. Okay. As you can see, all of your eyeballs have remained in. Good. Anson, your one word clue. Chocolate. Tom? <laughs> Pay attention over here. This we'll get over there in a moment, guys. Tom. It is, and this is naked chocolate. Naked as in naked. <laughs> oh, naked as in naked. Daniel? Ancient. Dick? 
Bareback. All right, let's put them together. Bareback, ancient, naked, chocolate, equestrian ride for $100. I hope it's Lady Godiva. Yes, yeah. it is Lady Godiva. You get $100. You're $100. And you're on your way to the goal of $400 and yeah. a chance to play our one-shot jackpot. And today, that jackpot is worth... $20,000. We'll be back with a $200 subject right after this. We're back with a $200 subject. Randy's in the lead with $100. Nancy has zero. And we're going to begin this one with the ladies again. Would you kindly return to your soundproof room? We'll give you a wake-up call. Close sesame. All right, they can't hear. Celebrities, I want you to write down your one-word clue to this subject. Harem. H-A-R-E-M. Harem. Why are you looking at me that way, Miss Lawrence? I may be hoping something brilliant would come from your nose to my brain. I do have a harem. My wife found out... Remember to put your lights on when you have finished writing your one-word clue. <laughs> the lights are on. They have completed writing their clues. Ladies, we're going to start with you. Your one-word subject, Marla, for harem. Well, actually, anybody dumb enough to be in the harem wouldn't want their face seen, so I put veil. <laughs> <laughs> Good oddball thinking. Lydia. It's a good thing I didn't almost put. Okay, is this one word? I think it is. Belly button. Judges? Belly button yes. is one word. Yes, yes, it is. I love you again. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, there was a little lint in her belly button. Yeah. I just put that out of there. Uh, Vicki, what is your one word clue? Well, thank God there's someone intelligent around here to help clarify things. <laughs> Bigamist. Bigamist. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Deidre? Hopefully my crossword puzzle education has helped out a lot in this case. If I'm speaking with the intelligentsia, you understand, Oda. Help me out. Oda, oh, that's correct. Yes, that is the three-letter word. Oda. Harem. You're Harem. absolutely Oda. correct. Aren't they oh, wonderful? I can't help you. Not uh, one knockout. Such an adventure. Oda, bigamist, belly button, and veil. Oda Harem. You're That's the, a new cologne. Oda Harem. Oda Harem. Oda Harem. <laughs> However, I, the gentleman the could knock you out. The only one I'm really worried about is the word Oda. I'm sure there'll be a duplication on that Oh, one. sure there will. All right, gentlemen, oddballs, what is your one-word clue, Anson? Well, Jamie, it sounds to me like a hell of a lot of fun. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not necessarily. <laughs> oh, he knows. Oh. Well, she... Chic talk, what have you got? Time. Well, it's not all that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to take care of guarding the door. Oh. I put, so, oh. uh, I put uh, Arabian in the hopes that maybe that would lead them in the right direction. Arabian funds. They're not necessarily limited to air. Oh, dig, digging for oil might be Arabian funds. That's true. Daniel? We're going in the right direction. I'm thinking of group fun. Group. Ah. Group. An Arabian fun. <laughs> now, you would Dick. think that uh, Marla and I would cancel each other out, except the last harem that I saw was in a ski resort in Colorado. <laughs> Vail. Vail. <laughs> That's a duplication. Oh, they caught me. Marla they caught and me. Dick are not out. <laughs> Kindly remove your veils. Oh, my goodness. That's what you look like. All right. So we have... May, may I see the, uh, the clues, please? We have group, Arabian fun. We have Oda, bigamist, and belly button. Hide your clues. Hide your clues, please. The subject is harem. Let's bring back our teammates. Okay. As you can see, one of your oddball ladies has been knocked out of play. Nancy, however, you have Lydia and Vicky and Nidra. This is the $200 subject. Lydia, your one word clue. Belly button. Vicky? Bigamist. Nidra. Oda. <laughs> uh, uh, Oda, bigamist, and belly button for $200 and the lead. Is it a harem? Yes! <laughs> Oh, that's it. 
Okay, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, Nancy, Nancy, tell the audience what gave you the clue. Oda. <laughs> she was crossword puzzles, that's right. All right, the score is Nancy, $200, Randy, $100, and we'll be back right after this. Oda. Word. Score is $200 to $100, and that means that we're going to play a, a $400 subject, and this one we're going to play a little differently, okay? But we're going to send you into the soundproof room, all right? Close the doors. Ladies, remove your, your, uh, your clues. All right. Celebrities, get ready to write down your one-word clue to this subject. The subject is Wheaties. Wheaties. W H E A T I E S. Wheaties. Yes, sir. Daniel? All right. All the lights on. That means the celebrities have completed writing down their one word subject. Remember, the subject is Wheaties. Do not reveal your clues. Let's bring back your teammates. Okay, celebrities have written down their clues. This time the two of you will alternate, selecting one clue at a time. The first player to guess the subject wins the game and goes on to play the big back, the blackjack, or blackjack, jackpot. <laughs> That's another game that Goodson, Mark Goodson's working on. I, here's the important thing about this, uh, this particular playoff subject. Uh, if you choose a duplicate, you lose your turn to guess. Nancy, you're in the lead, you're gonna go first, pick an oddball. Which okay. oddball do you want? Okay, um, Lydia. Okay, flakes. Flakes, for the game, your answer. Is it dandruff? <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Randy. I'm gonna take Tom. No, you're not. <laughs> for the game, flakes, that's a duplicate. You, you lose that turn to get. Over to you, uh, Nancy. Vicky. Vicky? I said retin. Retin, flakes, for the game. Is it Kellogg's? No. All right, over to you, Randy. Uh, Pick an oddball. Anson. Muscles. Muscles. This is for the game. You got it! You got it! We have to say goodbye to you. Thank you. You get to keep the $200, and we have some nice gifts, gifts for you backstage. All right. Thank you. Okay. That was great. Just wonderful. Randy's won the game. You have $500, and we'll be back to play the one-shot jackpot, where that jackpot today is worth $20,000. We're back with uh, Champ Randy, $500, and all of our celebrity oddballs. Now, all of them, all of them are going to try to help you win this $20,000 jackpot. I could use it. We're going to say goodbye <laughs> to you. Well, I shouldn't say that. We'll say so long okay. to you, okay? Go back into your soundproof room. Close the doors. Celebrities, the jackpot subject is dribble. Dribble, D-R-I-B-B-L-E, dribble. Okay, Nidra? I, I said okay, Nidra. I heard you okay, say okay. nibble there, but I thought the last you said wieners on, on a while ago. She thought I, I said wieners. I had Frankfurter on mine. I, I thought guess. he said wieners. It wasn't wieners at all. Let's put Frankfurter up for wieners. <laughs> will you put your, will you finish writing? Put your light out, please. All right. Do not reveal your clues. Okay. All the celebrities have their lights on. Okay. This time we will not reveal the clues. The subject is dribble. What is the subject, audience? Dribble! You got it, Nidra? Got it. Okay. Got it. Let's open the doors and bring Randy back. Randy? <laughs> How did he do that? He ain't human. She has nice departing gifts. All right, here's your chance to win $20,000. But you only get one shot at our jackpot subject. But you can ask for as many clues as you want one clue at a time okay. but here's the risk if you get a clue that is a duplicate you lose 
All right, so be very, very careful when you decide to take that one shot. Okay. All right, which oddball do you want to pick first? You can choose from either team. I'll take Marla Gibbs. Marla. Saliva. All right. Do you want to take your shot now or play on? I think I'll take another clue. All right. Uh, how about Dick Martin? Magic. Magic saliva. I understand. I understand. It Magic makes sense. saliva. You want, to, you want to take a shot or you want to play on? Magic saliva. I'm going to take another clue if I could. Okay. Uh, how about Vicki Lawrence? Smart man. Smart move, Randy. <laughs> I said bounce. Bounce, saliva, magic. You want a shot or you want to play on? Bounce, saliva. I'll kind of take another clue. Okay. Um, pick, a, pick an oddball. How about Daniel? Daniel. Globetrotter. Globetrotter. Magic, bounce, saliva for $20,000. You want to take a shot or play on? I've got to take another clue. All right. Pick an oddball. Anson? <laughs> Glass. Glass. Do you want to take a Go shot? Magic, you want to play on? Bounce. I'm going to take another clue. <laughs> I, I'm I, we're, 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 we're down to three. I don't know. The way the oddball people have been playing, it doesn't seem like you would get a duplicate. I'm going to take Nidra. Nidra? Slobber. Slobber. Bounce. Saliva, magic, globetrotter, glass. Do you want to take a shot because this is for $20,000 yeah. or do you want to play on it? I do only have two left. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I knew who it was originally or what it was originally. It's a person, place, or thing, obviously. I, I'm going to live dangerously. I've got to take the light. Lydia. God, you thank you. Spit. Spit. <laughs> Slobber. Bounce, spit, saliva. I hope no one's just tuning in. <laughs> Glass, globetrotter, magic. Do you want to take a shot or do you want to play on? I can only ask you this one more time. I don't know about you. I sure as hell like to quit myself. <laughs> I, I, how about one more? All right, one more. What do you got there, Tom? You can't miss. Your rule. This, this is for twenty thousand dollars. So we have magic, we have globe trotter, we have drool, we have glass, we have slobber, we have bounce, spit, and saliva. This is for twenty thousand dollars. Slobber, bounce, spit, you, saliva. You have to make a guess. This is this is the last. Let's time. give him one more. The last time. <laughs> magic. Um, Say anything. It's twenty thousand dollars. Oh, can I get? I just, All right. it could okay. be anything. Yes, it, you're, well, okay. The, the subject is dribble. Dribble was the subject. Some people went to basketball, some people went someplace else. <laughs> but that's okay. You, you've, got, you've got $500, and you'll be back to play with us tomorrow, I'm sure. We'll be back with more of Oddball right after this. You got five hundred dollars. You're coming back with us tomorrow. The next time we play one shot jackpot, it's going to be worth twenty-five thousand dollars. Thank you, Oddball ladies. Thank you, Oddball gentlemen. And thank you, audience, for sharing your time with us. Until tomorrow, Jamie Farr for Oddball. This is Gene Woods speaking for Oddball. A Mark Goodson television production. Could Ray Charles identify his friends through their body odors? <laughs> Did Richard Nixon ever contemplate a nose job? <laughs> what food creates the most gas? 
Learn the answers to these and other meaningful questions right now on that awful quiz show. Now from Hollywood, a town where the moral majority is a minority, ladies and gentlemen, here are your hosts, taking a short walk to the podium, John and Greg Rice. And I'm Greg. How do you like these new suits? Nice, huh? These are definitely not Ken and Barbie hand-me-downs. <laughs> this week, Greg and I went shopping, and one of the places we ended up was a tall and big man shop. This guy came over to us and said, what are you guys doing here? I looked up and said, just setting goals. <laughs> setting goals. <laughs> and one of the goals we have here right now is to bring you a really terrific show with some great guests. We'll be right back after these words to meet a game show junkie and an animal psychologist. We'll be right back after this. Hello again. Welcome back to the show. How could we introduce our first two guests, please? John and Greg, I'd like you to meet a student who calls himself a game show junkie and a woman who is an animal psychologist. Say hello to Bob Bowden and Beatrice Slidecker. Beatrice, Bob, welcome. Beatrice, how long have you been an animal psychologist? About 12 years. Do you talk to your animals and do they talk to you back? Absolutely. Hey, I was talking to a, a cat one day and I asked him why <laughs> this cat got real mad. The lady was laying on the couch talking to uh, her, the cat's former owner on the phone. The cat went over and peed all over her head. <laughs> and what, what, what did you tell her to do? Scotch guard her hair? No. <laughs> I uh, asked the cat why he did it. He said, I'm mad. She's talking to my former owner. They both say I should live inside. I want to go out and sit on the back fence and talk to the other cats, and she won't let me out. Which animals are most neurotic? I think poodles, because I had this lady came to me one time with a little tiny teacup poodle, and I asked her what his problem was. She said, well, he's wet all over my house. He's done about $5,000 worth of damage. And I said, you mean to tell me you've still got him in your house? She said, well, I just can't discipline that poor little thing. I might hurt him. Tell the lady. I told her to put a diaper on him. Or Scotch guard the furniture? <laughs> Are women pet owners more inclined to bring their animals to you than men? Yeah, but uh, the ones I have the most problems with are men. I don't know why, but these guys are all afraid the dog's going to tell what's going on in the bedroom and they don't want me to come and see them. Like Scotch guarding the sheets? <laughs> Bob, why do you call yourself a game show junkie? I've watched thousands of them on TV. I've, I've been to the tapings of hundreds of them. In have the you ever been on a game show? I was on the dating game. <laughs> Did you get the girl? No, I didn't, but I think I came out ahead because I won three cases of motor oil. And, uh, well, I guess if you didn't get a you... date, you'd have plenty of time to change your oil in your car. Well, she was a real dipstick, yeah. let me tell you. Oh, good. <laughs> well, tell me, do you think that being on so many game shows has affected your life in any way? Well, I guess it has. Uh, I covered my wall of my dorm room with TV tickets. I carry a little portable bell with me, and uh, I find myself uh, using it in uh, different situations to uh, talk about game show cliches, like, say, I'm overhearing a conversation, and one guy will say to the next guy, what time did you get up this morning? The other guy will say, 7 o'clock. I'll go, ding, that's a right answer. <laughs> Or, uh, or say somebody, uh, say someone comes up to me and says, oh, would you like to go out with my sister next Friday night? Well, I'll say, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. But I, I will take what's behind door number three. <laughs> Who's your favorite game show host? Well, my favorite game show is uh, Jeopardy. Yeah. And uh, so my favorite host would have to be Art Fleming. Well, who's your favorite announcer? Well, the announcer of Jeopardy, Don Pardo. Who else? Sorry about that, Hal. <laughs> Sorry, Hal. 
Can you do an impression of Don Pardo? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's sure, I do some. that all the time. Let's hear some. Well, some of our contestants receive a generous supply of rice seroni, the big flavor side dish that's so quick, so easy. The one you saw taste of it over at Google Direction. Try rice seroni, the San Francisco food. And you and a companion will fly luxury to Mexico on the line. Most people fly to Mexico on your trip to Puerto Vallarta. That's wonderful. Yeah, Bob, from Mexico, Bob. you'll have a brand new car. Bob, 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 excuse me, Bob. Hal said that's wonderful. <laughs> Oh. Now, now it's time for you okay. to make your second appearance on a game show. Okay. Hopefully you'll end up with more than a case of motor oil, though. I hope so. As a team, you'll start out with $500. You'll be asked four questions. Each question you'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 per question. Remember, you'll only have eight seconds to come up with your answer. And if you're the lucky contestants that have the most money at the end of the show, you'll be invited back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question that's sent in by a viewer. All right. And your first question has to do with animals. How much would you care to bet? Let's go for all of them. Okay. 200 For $200, one country recently spent $60,000 to study why some male frogs become homosexual. <laughs> Was that country Poland, France, or the United States? B, ask the dog. Ask the dog, B. You sure? Absolutely sure? You sure? Yeah. All right. I think it was the U.S. paid it. That's exactly right. According to Senator William Fox, All right, all right. The United States recently spent over $60,000 on that project. Ribbit. Bruce. How Bob said that's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now you have $700, and your next category has to do with the five senses. Four senses. The five senses. Maybe four, four. Right? Four, four senses. Oh, four senses. Okay, how much would you care to bet? Two hundred. For two hundred dollars, which one of these famous blind people said <laughs> that they could identify their friends by their body odors? Was it Ray Charles, George Shearing, Helen Keller, or little Stevie Wonder? Who was it? <laughs> Helen Keller. That's exactly right. That was it. Whoa! <laughs> that, that question stinks. It really does. That gives you $900, and you still have two questions left. Your next question deals with quotations. How much will you bet? Well, let's go ahead. $200. For $200, which American president said, things are more like they are today than they've ever been before? Sounds like all of them. Sure does. <laughs> things are what? Was that President Calvin Coolidge? Dwight Eisenhower, Lyndon Johnson, or Jimmy Carter? Who was it? I don't even understand the question. Things don't care. Things are more like they are now than they've ever been before. <laughs> Aren't they? <laughs> Calvin Coolidge. I'm sorry, but that was said by Dwight Eisenhower in a press conference in the mid-50s. What does he know? You still have $700. This is your last question. Your last category deals with diet. How much will you bet? Okay. All right, 200 For $200, who said, never eat anything that you can't lift? <laughs> was, it, was it Orson Welles, <laughs> Miss Piggy, <laughs> Kate Smith, or Linda Lovelace? Well, in, in honor of B, we'll say Miss Piggy. Yes, that's exactly correct. That advice Whoa! Was Miss Piggy. I thought it was going to be the last one. I, I wonder if Kermit weighs more than I do. <laughs> well, you've ended up with $900, and if you have more money than the other contestants at the end of the show, we'll invite you back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question. In the meantime, thanks for being here. You've been great. We'll be right back with more of that awful quiz show after this. John and Greg, they're a woman who collects celebrity garbage and a man who's the world's fastest beer drinker. Say hello to Bill the Fox Foster and Edna Looney, will you? Edna 
that. So you collect celebrity garbage, huh? Yes, but I don't call it garbage. I call it antique. <laughs> but what I mean is, before you turn them into antiques, you get them out of the garbage can, right? Yes, I get everything out of the trash. <laughs> and the when, when you were a little girl growing you up... You were things, little. I was never little. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, and I didn't mean to say that. What I mean is... No, I did mean. What I'm trying to say is, did you ever think one day you'd grow up to... To pick celebrity garbage? Yes, anybody can get Doris Day's picture, but no one can get Doris Day flea collar. Doris Day with a flea collar? Doris Day dog wear flea collar. <laughs> you mean you actually have one of Doris Day's yes, dog flea collars? Yes, I collar? have a few of them right here. <laughs> in my bag. That's celebrity garbage? Yes. I swear, when I saw you come on the stage this afternoon, I didn't say anything, but I thought you'd been to pick and save. <laughs> and brought your groceries. No, I wouldn't bring no groceries on no TV show. Well, you bring your garbage. That's not garbage, that's antique. <laughs> well, what else have you got in that bag? I got this ketchup bottle from Vincent Price. <laughs> and I got a bunch of bras, 43 of them. Vincent Price's bra? <laughs> What's the best time to go out and look for your treasures? The best time is to watch the paper and watch the week when they're getting a divorce. The week that they're getting a divorce, you can find some very interesting things in the trash. The week that Debbie Reno and Eddie Fisher got a divorce, I found six albums. Doris Day? <laughs> Who's garbage right here? Is this in his picture? Oh, I got John Barber. I was looking in his trash. <laughs> John Barber's trash. I found an A incredible t shirt. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Bill. As the world's fastest beer drinker, have you ever set any records? Yes, I uh, set a record. I drank two jugs to uh, one person's one. When did you do, when did you do that? Oh, I did that uh, last Friday night, last Saturday night. I'm going to do it again this coming Friday and Saturday. Where do you do this at? I run a place in Santa Monica called the Fox Inn. I uh, drink beer and play the piano there. When did you, you see, discover that you had this secret talent? I, uh, I started this one night when I was short on customers and I had a lot of beer left over, so I just <laughs> fell right into it. What's the most beer you've ever drunk in a night? Well, I, don't, I think counting's a sign of weakness, but two customers counted 28. So I drank two more jugs just to show class. So Boy, I drink about must have really been slow that night, huh? Yeah. How many years have you been, have you been doing this sort of over, thing? Over 15 years. That's over 45,000 jugs. That's a lot of beer. Yes, it is. Well, would you give us a demonstration of this ability that you have here, this talent? Yes, if you have a couple of jugs, I'll... Okay, Laura, bring out the jugs. <laughs> okay. Okay, Bill, Laura has two jugs over a pint each. We'll time you. Wait a minute. We'll time you. As soon as you take your first sip, go ahead. Okay. We I do a chant with this. It's called Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. No. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Three seconds. That's fantastic. What does Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy mean? Sa sounds like German for where's the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Edna, it's been great talking to you, but now let's see if we can't win some money playing that awful quiz. As a team, you'll have $500 to start. You'll be asked four questions. You'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 a question. You'll have only eight seconds in which to give us your answer. At the end of the show, if you end up with more money than the other guests, you'll come back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question sent in by a viewer. Your first category happens to do with food. How much will you bet? 200. All right. Okay. How much? 200. For $200, which of the following foods creates the most gas? <laughs> Is it lima beans, pinto beans, soybeans, or peanuts? I say uh, yeah, yeah. We've de uh, decided on pinto beans. I'm sorry. But according to the United States Department of Agriculture, they blame soybeans. <laughs> your next category, your next category might be a little better. It deals with Richard Nixon, who some people think that beats out soybeans. <laughs> How much will you bet for Richard Nixon? What's the highest we can bet on him? The highest you can bet is 200. Okay. We'll go 100. <laughs> For $100, in 1954, 
Then Vice President Richard Nixon wrote a note to his wife, Pat, and said one of the following. President Eisenhower should be impeached. I'll never run for public office again. Or I'm going to have a nose job and an operation to remove my sweat glands. Which was it? Go ahead, I'm pretty sure it's I'll never run again. That's exactly correct. In 1954, according to the Book of Facts, Nixon promised his wife, Pat, that he would never run for public office again. I guess he lied to his family, too. <laughs> you now have $400 and two more questions. And your next question has to do with relationships. How much would you care to bet for relationships? I'm good on those. Yeah, let's book $200 on that relationship. For $200, which of these people said that whenever I'm alone with a beautiful woman, the devil in me becomes dangerous? Was it Roman Polanski, <laughs> Jimmy Carter, <laughs> Tiny Tim, <laughs> or Billy Jean King? You got to think of our host. It's Tiny, okay, tiny Tim. That's exactly correct. That was a confession made by Tiny Tim. You now have $600. Your final question is about the first time. How much will you bet? Go ahead. 200 For $200. A world famous musician said he lost his virginity to a chesty 30 year old blonde who sang the blues. Was that musician Lawrence Welk? <laughs> Liberace or Zubin Mehta? Who was it? I don't know. I, I go for Zubin Mehta. Okay. Now let's go for Zubin Mehta. That statement was made by Liberace in a book called The First Time. Well, you've ended up with $400. We've had a great time being here with you today. We've learned some valuable information I'm sure that you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. So, thanks so much for being here. And we'll be right back with more of that awful quiz right after this. Thank, Thank you. you. Greg, say hello to Warren Lyons, who runs a therapy group called The Joy of Singing, and Joy Rippett, founder and owner of Roommate Finders. Joy, we're running a little behind, but you are always been a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> but what exactly is Roommate Finder service? We sell roommates. You sell <laughs> We put people together to share living accommodations, um, mainly males and females. It's becoming very popular. That's exactly what I try to do. Uh, <laughs> Warren, uh, what do you do in the joy of singing a therapy workshop? Well, it's not therapy, John. It's a workshop for anybody who wants to stand alone, sing in front of others without fear, without self-criticism, and with joy. Well, very simple and very powerful. Well, that's great. Joy Warden, we'd love to talk to you longer, but we're running a little late. And we know you'd like to win some money, so let's get on with that awful quiz. You both know the rules, and your first category has to do with recreation. How much would you care to bet? 200 Sure. We're a team. For $200. One of these famous people said, I tried marijuana once, but it didn't do anything for me. <laughs> Was it <laughs> Anita Bryant, uh. John Wayne, the Reverend Jerry Falwell, or Ronald Reagan? Who was it? Okay. Who was agreed. It? Anita, Anita Bryant. I'm sorry, but that was said in an interview in his later years by John Wayne. He did, did say that he had tried marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> did he say that in the high and the mighty? I don't know. <laughs> well, your next category has to do with language. How much would you care to bet? Two hundred. Sure. Go. How much? We're going to right. Two hundred dollars. Sure. For two hundred dollars, which of the following words was voted the worst sounding word in the English language? Was it flatulence? Soybeans, <laughs> oh. pusillanimous, scab, or cacophony. Which was it? Scab. 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 I'm sorry again, but it was cacophony, and it was voted by the National Association of Teachers of Speech. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, I'd have voted for, you know, for scum. Okay, your third question has to do with holy matrimony. How much would you care to bet? You How much have we got left? A hundred? We only have a hundred. hundred dollars. Oh, sure, that works. 
for $100. One of these men said he'd broken nearly all of his marriage vows. Was that person Tom Snyder? <laughs> Former Congressman Wilbur Mills? Pat Boone? Or John Denver? Who was it? Wilbur Mills. I'm sorry, but that well, was... He told me so. Wilbur told me so. That was said in he did. He called me last night and said I broke the law. That was said in a People magazine interview by Pat oh, Boone. Now, you don't have any money left, but we do have one more question for you, and we'll play it for a consolation prize. <laughs> and, and the category has to do with famous women in history. Which one of these famous women in history had three breasts? <laughs> Was it King Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn? Was it Joan of Arc, Sarah Bernhardt, or Catherine the Great? Who was it? Oh. <laughs> A lot of embarrassment. <laughs> Hello, for this I went to college. <laughs> Hello, I'm brilliant. Let's see. It's Sarah Bernhardt. She told me so the other night, too. I'm sorry, but according to a book of lists, it was Anne Boleyn. Wrong, really? She, she, also okay. had, she also had six fingers, but King Henry cut off her one hand. <laughs> well, well, Sarah, you didn't win any money. Joy Ward. Thank you very much for playing the quiz. But if you would, help us welcome back the winning couple of the night, Bob Bowden and Beatrice Lightecker with $900. Of course. Wonderful. Wonderful. Welcome back. This bonus $1,000 awful question was sent in by Linda Riddle of West Palm Beach, Florida. Remember, you'll only have eight seconds to answer it. Besides the $1,000, though, what else can they win, Hal? John and Greg, if they answer the bonus awful question correctly, they'll also win an all-expense-paid vacation to Puerto Vallarta. They'll fly first class on Mexicana Airlines and spend 10 days at the lush hotel Camino Real. Good luck. Which one of these men was rumored not to have died while making love? Was it Earl Flynn, Nelson Rockefeller, Steve Cochran, or John Garfield? Can we have your answer, please? Nelson Rockefeller. I'm sorry, you're wrong. The one rumored not to have died while making love was Earl Flynn. He had a heart attack in his swimming pool, swimming upstream to his girlfriend. <laughs> well, you didn't win the biggie, but you do end up with $900. Like I said, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much for playing that awful quiz. And remember, folks, that the easiest thing about doing the impossible is that you have no competition. So think big and we'll see you later. If you would like to have a question asked on that awful quiz show, send that question plus a source verifying it to that awful quiz show, 915 North La Brea, Hollywood, California, 90038. If we use your question on the air, we'll send you $25 plus an awful t shirt. Bosom Buddies have been together for years and years and years now playing our game, and we're happy about that. Let's meet uh, Tanya Rodriguez and Chandra Burdell. Did I get those names yep, anywhere? Yeah, perfect. Uh, right? Oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> Me too. Now, wait a minute. It says you've been friends for 19 years. Over what is that? 19 years. When did you... You must have been tots. Is that we were fair? kids, yeah. and we lived, grew up in the same neighborhood, basically. Yeah? And where was that neighborhood? Manhattan. Uh, Manhattan, New York. All right. And now mm -hmm. you're both out here? Yeah. And let's hear a little bit about you, Chandra. Well, I'm the proud mother of one six-year-old son. Hi, Joey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd kill me if I didn't do that. Uh, no, well, we, we certainly don't want to have a homicidal son. Mm -hmm. uh, sells motorcycle parts, it says here. Yes, I do, for one of the largest dealerships in Southern California. Okay, nice to have you here. And Tanya, what's your story? 
Um, let's see, moved here five years ago. She yeah. followed me. Uh -huh. And I'm the godmother to her six-year-old boy. Oh, uh -huh, nice. And um, love being here in Southern California. Good. Nice to have you both with us. Lots Thank of you. luck on our show. Let's say hi to uh, Priscilla Johnson and Sarita Johnson. Did I get all that right? Uh, we yes, have, uh, Johnson did. and Johnson here from Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, let's see, uh, you've two known each other how long? Six years. Yeah, you just bump into each other at the grocery <laughs> store, or how did this happen? No, we met through my daughter, who has the same name as her sister. Of course. <laughs> uh, now, let's hear a little bit about your, uh, each of your lives individually, Sarita. Well, I'm a former student at Cal State University, Los Angeles, yeah. and I'm the proud parent of two beautiful children that are in the audience, as well as my parents. And I like to say hi to Duke, the man that lights up my world. He's on the road. Oh, all right. That sounds exciting. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's a Thank Probably you. a pleasure to be lit up by Duke. It's oh. nice. Uh, Priscilla, what is other wrong with you? Did that, did that, did that shock you somewhat? No. Uh, what, what were you about? You have three children, right? I have three kids, yes, and I'm yeah. a home health aide. Okay, so thank you. Yes, along to you. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. And here are the men for the day, George McAdams and Kurt Lattimore, uh, uh, Californians both, yes. right? Yes. Uh, you work together? Is this uh, how you met? Is that the yes, right. story? Mm -hmm. the last, last, last three and a half years ago. Good. Uh, George, tell us a little bit about you quickly. Well, I picked my wife out of a catalog uh, <laughs> through a video dating service. Really? And my wife, Annie, and we've been married a little over six years. I have a beautiful daughter, Sarah, mm -hmm. who's 22 months and one on the way. Great. Has her warranty expired, by the way? Would no, you not that yet. From I'm just curious about that. Not yet. Uh, Kurt, how about you? I'm a mechanical engineer. I've been married now four years uh, to my beautiful wife, Kimberly. I have two daughters, Taylor, which is just about two years old, and Danielle, who's six months. All right, you all ready to do this thing? Come on, yeah. top three teams will be back on Friday, so let's see if we can get in on that action. $1,000 is the top dollar value for our first round, and here's our first puzzle. The category is person. And just before the show, we drew numbers to see who would start a game in the team of Chandra and Tanya will begin. Go ahead. Stop, it didn't stop. Oh. If you have to do it, that's not the worst time. Okay, uh, okay. okay. go ahead. Serena and Priscilla. Come on, more money. Let's do it. Come on. 200. Oh. Yeah, do we have any ends? We do not. Sorry. Kurt and George. Come on. And it's 400. R? Yes, one R. We're on the board there. Big money, big money, big money. 800. N. N. No, oh. watch. Yeah, that happens there. Uh. Uh, sorry, guys. Okay, Chandra, Tanya. Come on, come on. Big money, big money. 500. 500. S, please. Nope, there's no S. Uh. It's in Priscilla. Okay. I am going to spin. Oh. Okay, is there a T there? There are two T's. Oh, there. Yay, thank you. And there. Okay, $400. What are you going to do? Spin again. Come on. This money. Okay. 500. Great. Is there a B there? There is a B. Great. Yes. $900. Oh, yeah. I like enthusiasm. Big money, big money. No, 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 no. There you go. What letter? Is there a D? Pick up that free spin. Yep. <laughs> Good spin. Going again, looks like. Come on, big money. Come on. Well, 150. Is there an M? That gets you over a thousand now. You have a thousand fifty dollars. There's the M. Yeah. One more time. One, One more time. time. Big money. Is there an L? Yes, one L. <laughs> what do we have, ladies? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's it. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, with the two of you yelling at the wheel, I wouldn't dare stop on bankrupt, I'll tell you that. And you have that free spin. That could help yes, you out a little lady. You have $1,300, well. and you're going to start our next round. Here's a oh, prize yeah. you could win. Charlie, let's hear about it. Okay, Pat, for big screen picture performance, it's the Magnavox large screen television with smart sound volume leveling, high contrast smart screen, and other home theater features. There's one for both of you. $4,400. Congratulations. Wow.
So each member of our team to get the big screen. They split the cash. That's the way this works this week. And uh, we're all set for our next puzzle. Category is phrase, and Sereda and Priscilla will start round two. Big money. Big money. Fifty. Is there an S? There are two of them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Big money. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. A T. Uh-huh. Five T. Oh, nice. One thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. I, did you say? I. Mm-hmm. There are some eyes. Come on, more money. Come on. Stop, stop. 200. Is there an N? Yes, three N's. 2,100 yes. now. No money, so I assume you like it. Come on! Keep money! No, 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 no. Well, you didn't need to use that first. I, I know you feel badly about the bad luck around you, but um, you have $2,600. What would you like to do? I saw it. Okay. It was told to me in strict confidence. Yeah, there you go. pretend to be a little confused. No, there you go. No, no, that was good. Now you're doing it. Uh, well, you didn't need to use that free spin last time after no, all. $2,600 uh, that round. You've won them both so far. $3,900. But you're all in this game. we got some big money coming on the wheel. Stay with us. They're best friends, you know. And I can see why. Yeah. We would love for our best friends to win the $10,000 out on the wheel here. We'll see if that happens. Fill in the blank is our category. That means we have some question marks up there. And Kurt and George will start. Big money, big money, big money. Big money, big money, big money. <laughs> 300. T. Yeah, three T's. Good start. Keep it going, guys. $900. Full spin. 150. 
S. Yes, three S's. Oh. We'd like to buy a vowel. Um, a? Yes, there are some A's, three of them. Stand. Seven hundred. N. Yes, one N. Uh, we'd like to buy a vowel. Uh-huh. An E. Yeah, lots of E's up there. We're down to $1,550. There come six E's, and it is still your turn. Uh, we'll spin. Three hundred. Uh, w. One W. Uh, can we buy a vowel? Yeah. An I. Uh huh. Three I's. It's been all Kurt and George this round. Can we solve it. Yeah, go ahead. We'll solve it. Okay. Political masquerade sweet sixteen. You got it. Uh huh. Yeah. Good luck. Nice going. Right. Good chance to win another thousand dollars. What is the common thread there? Party. party. Yeah, all party. Not necessarily in that order. Well, let's see. We had the big screen the TVs. You each get one of those. Woo! And you won the cash, and that means you have seven thousand dollars and the lead at this point. And we'll be back to play some more. And uh, Chandra and Tanya will get us started when we come back. There's $5,000 space on the wheel. Our category is before and after. Tanya, Chandra, let's go. Go, oh, big money, Tanya. Come on. No, you're okay. You don't need to. Oh. I mean, I appreciate the offer. Everybody watch the arrow right in front of them. Six hundred dollars. T. Uh, yes, there's three T's. Where exactly did I lose control? Eighteen hundred dollars. What's been? All right. Five fifty. Is there a? Yes, there are two R's. You're up to $2,900. Okay, this way. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, nine. nine. Is there an N? There is no N. Okay. I'm using the free spin now. Pass yeah. it on down. You can spin or buy a vowel. What do you want to do? I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Uh huh. Could we have an E? It's okay with me, yeah. It's okay with Vanna, sure. One E. Now what? Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh. Eight hundred. Yes. Is there an S, Vanna? <laughs> Vanna, oh. they'd like to know. Oh. See, you didn't ask the right person there. Uh, yeah. I think it was a Paul. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, George and Kurt, it's your turn. Eight hundred. H? Yes, two H's. You're on the board with $1,600. Then we buy a vowel? Yeah. O. Mm-hmm, four O's. One M, yep. Now hang on, guys. That sound means time is running out. So I'm going to give the wheel a final spin. I'll ask you to give me a letter. The puzzle will have five seconds to solve it. Vowels worth nothing. Consonants worth $800 a piece before and after the category. Kurt and George, your turn a letter, please. F. Yeah, one F. Let it come up. What do we have? Tooth Fairy Godmother. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they came on strong at the end. Laying in the weeds. You're all right. 
Uh, $2,400 that round, and you are the big winners with $9,400. That means we'll be playing the bonus round with you in just a moment. <laughs> Stay right here. Uh, well, they got you there, but uh, you won $3,900, and we sure had a lot of fun having you both here. Well, Thank you very much. We certainly had a pleasure being here. Thanks. Thanks. Stay friends. That's yes, important. Thank you. And, you know, you have proved the adage we've talked about many times. It doesn't uh, help if you know the answer if it's not your turn. I can see <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but we have nice party gifts for each of you, and we appreciate Thank you both you. being here. Thanks very much. Okay, gentlemen, come on down. Watch your step as you do. We've got to look at some prizes here. We have three terrific ones left, starting with this Caribbean cruise. Charlie, details, please. You'll explore some of the exotic islands of the Caribbean with Dolphin Cruise Lines, over $16,000. Cruise for each of you. That's terrific. Or you can split this annuity. That's a $30,000 prize. And speaking of splitting big-ticket items, how about the cash? $25,000. We will take a break, come back, and they'll try to add to their $9,400 in just a minute. Best Friends Week. Uh, moving along nicely for these guys. Kurt and George with $9,400. One of you needs to pick one of those letters. Go for it, Kurt. Okay. I'll take that, and let's get to our puzzle. Phrase the category, R-S-T-L-N-E. Vanna, let's go. All right, now we need three more consonants and a vowel between the two of you here. G. H, G. Okay. E. F. F. Okay, well, H, D, and F, right? Is that mm -hmm. what we came up with? And, huh? I'm sorry, H, G, and F. H, G. Now it'll teach me to recap. And now we need a vowel. A. A. All right. And any of those up there? Good. Go to it, audience. No help from you, please. Okay, it's a phrase. You have 10 seconds. Tell us what it is. Good luck. Fit, Fit for, for a king. king. There you go. In stereo. Come on, come on. Yeah! They're happy. They're pleased. Yeah. George yes. and Kurt, yeah. your friendship yeah. has just landed on great fortune as you split $25,000. Well, they weren't friends before they are now. Hey, congratulations, well, thank you. George. Thank nice going, Kurt. Thank uh, you. Spend it wisely. Uh, $34,400 cash and prizes. Good work. And we'll be back to wrap things up in just a moment. We've given away every bonus prize so far this week. Yeah, we're down to two, but it's two, two great ones. The cruise and the annuity. Maybe we'll do it again tomorrow. Best I Friends so. Week continues. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Some contestants may receive Unwrap a Little Debbie Swiss Roll and you unwrap a smile. America's number one snack cake is always fun and delicious. By the box or handy single pack. Centrum Junior Vitamins feature Shamu and his crew. Fun shapes bursting with fruit flavors. Centrum Junior, still more complete than any leading brand. Robitussin Cold Formulas, from the brand recommended by doctors, pharmacists, and Dr. Mom. Discover Robitussin Relief for your cold. For arthritis pain, discover the first in a unique class of pain reliever, Zostrix. With Zostrix, physician strength relief is in your hands. Maximum Strength Night Hall helps you fall asleep fast for a full night's sleep. Night Hall will help you get your Z's. And to help prevent osteoporosis at any age, it's never too late for Caltrate. This is Charlie O'Donnell speaking. Wheel of Fortune was created by Merv Griffin. Produced by Columbia Tri-Star Television. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's just go this far and no further. What do you say?
Uh, nice to have you with us. Uh, see you a little bit later. Uh, this is Las Vegas Week, although we are not in Las Vegas. We are in Culver City, California. I want to point that out. Truth in advertising. You get the wrong feeling that we're there, and we're not, I can assure you. Uh, but we have that Las Vegas feel, and we have a preview puzzle to look at. What's the scoop? There you go. Hope you got that. Uh, it is indeed Las Vegas Week. We have uh, great prizes loaded up, including an explorer, a boat, and a trip to the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas, as well as a trip to the city of Paris, which is uh, currently located in France. Uh, we also have a $25,000 cash prize each and every day on our little show. And now let's uh, welcome our players, if there's any time left to play our game. Hi, Linda. How are you? Fine, Pat. Uh, Linda Mesmer, right? Yes. From uh, Springfield, Missouri. And uh, we'd like to hear a little bit about you and your family or your job, whatever you'd like to talk about. I have a wonder wonderful husband, Gary. Mm -hmm. We've been married 31 years. Uh, we're both accountants and have our own accounting firm. Oh, how, how nice. We have three lovely daughters, Laura, Christy, and Tammy. And the joy of our lives are our five grandchildren. I'll bet you. And you know, in this age of chat rooms and internet, you the old-fashioned way you had a, you developed a pen pal relationship. How long have you been palling with your pen or penning with your pal? <laughs> 37 years. She's wow. from Wales, England. Um, we've never met, but we've been writing for 37 You've years. never met? No. Wow. I wish I could say we're going to bring her out, but <laughs> we're, frankly, can't afford the airfare. Yeah. Nice to have you here, Linda. Thank you. Uh, this is Ron Barham, who is from Hawthorne, California. Nice to see you, Ron. Uh, let's see. It says you have a child here and uh, some grandchildren. I have one fantastic son and four beautiful grandchildren. Uh, originally from Oakland, California. Yeah, and you're one of the now you're, the business you're in is is, is a cake decorator. But yes, they're, I am. They're how do we call these exotic? Right. Cakes. They come in all shapes and sizes. Thank you, Ron. Very much. <laughs> Make a wish takes on a whole new meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, and business is good, I take it. Yes, it is. All right, it's it's good to have you here, Ron. Thank you. Lots of luck to you. Thank you. Hi, Will. Hello. This would be Will Tiolo. Very Thank good. Thank you from <laughs> from uh, uh, Lindhurst, New Jersey. What do you do back there? I'm a computer consultant in New York City. Mm -hmm. I'm also a musician as well. Yeah. You want to? You you're in a band? Yes, I sing for a band, Novena. Yeah. And we play a lot in New York. We have uh, you can find us on the internet as well. Okay, at W, well, we can figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to have you here, Will. Lots Thank you very much. You too. We should play our game, shouldn't we? Uh, that's why we have this lovely wheel installed. Proper name is the category for our first round. We drew numbers before the show to see who would start. And Linda, it's good to be you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, oh no. That's not the start we hoped for, Linda. No. Ron, your turn. Say anything, Ron? You're sitting on a loser turn. Oh. This has got to stop somewhere. Maybe with Will. Come on, come on, Will. Three hundred. I'd like an N. Yes, one N. I'd like to buy a vowel. Okay. E. Two E's. There they come. Hmm. Might help. Spin it, Will. Thank you. S. One S. T. No, no T. Sorry. Linda, back to you. Come on. Hey. Come on, big money. Big money, big money. 400. R. There is no R. Ron, try it again. Three fifty. G. Yes, there is a G. Three hundred. D. One D. For six hundred fifty dollars. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Okay. A. Yeah, two A's. See what that does for you. relation to Cuba Gooding Jr. I'm just curious. Woo! Woo! And suddenly, suddenly Woo! went berserk. Uh, uh, you okay? 
Yeah. You're oh, good. You want $1,000? Yeah, I feel much the same way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we're going to hose him down, and uh, Charlie will talk about a prize someone could win in our second round. All right, Pat. The Fire Magic from Robert H. Peterson. A portable stainless steel barbecue with maximum outdoor cooking performance, temperature control, and long life by Robert H. Peterson Company. $3,988. I have one thing to say about that. Woo! <laughs> it's our second round, which is our puzzler round, where you can win an extra $3,000 after you solve this puzzle, that is. Place is the category. Ron, are you all co collected here? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, go, <laughs> go ahead. your turn. Come on. Five hundred. T. Yes, two T's. Here on the board. Thousand dollars. Nine hundred. M. There is an M. Yep. Linda, it's your turn. Come on. All right. Come on. 700. H. There's an H. You're on the board. I'd like to buy a vowel. Okay. An A. Yes, three A's. I have to spin. Give it a good one. There you go. Big money. P. Mm hmm One P. I'd like to buy a vowel. All right. An I. Uh-huh. Two I's. Right, that will help you out. You have $500 left, Linda. Okay. Come on. Come on. Big money. Big money. Big money. 450 L. Sure. Two L's. We're getting there. Fourteen hundred dollars. I'd like to solve the puzzle. Well, go ahead. Cereal aisle in the supermarket. You got it. Uh -huh. yes. Funny what a win does. Yes, That's it the is. one's outlook on life. Right. Yeah, fourteen hundred dollars. Now remember, it's our puzzle round, so you can oh, win more. Yeah, right. people forget that you can win three thousand dollars more for solving uh, the uh, puzzle you just solved. Uh, uh, what am I saying here? Things is the category. You have five seconds. Cornflakes. Yeah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you were paying attention. Thank you. You're welcome. You have the lead. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sir. That's good news. Uh, $4,400 what you have. We have some commercial messages coming up, and we'll be back and play another round of Wheel of Fortune. Stay right there. Captioning sponsored by now with new special edition cherry chocolate chip. It's even harder to resist the all natural goodness of Briars. It's just one of these four new delicious flavors. And Christopher Plummer perform live on CBS. We it's Las Vegas week, although we're in Culver City. But if we called it Culver City week, would you watch? Uh, it's a nice city, but you know, 
It's our jackpot round. Well, there goes the mail again here. Charlie. Yes, Pat. Tonight's jackpot round is brought to you by 1-800-Flowers.com. For Valentine's Day and every other occasion, 1-800-Flowers.com is where you'll find just the right gift to express your thoughtfulness. Visit our website at 1-800-Flowers.com or call us. And we've added this prize to the wheel. It's a Las Vegas getaway from National Airlines Vacations with air transportation aboard National Airlines, offering daily nonstop to Las Vegas from major U.S. cities coast to coast. While in Las Vegas, Happy on Rebel Adventure Tours will take you on an unforgettable helicopter ride to the Grand Canyon. You'll return on a guided jet ski tour on Lake Mead, followed by desert off-roading in your personally chartered Hummer. $4,359. I've seen trailers for major motion pictures that were less exciting than that. <laughs> the 70s, that's the category for our next round. There's the puzzle, and we'll ask Will to spin the wheel. Come on, Will. 550. T. Yes, one T. I'd like to buy a vowel. Okay. E. No, not this time. No E. Linda, it's your turn. Come on, with big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big money. 600. Ooh. H. Any H's? Not a one. Ron. Come on. Big money. Big money. All right. N. There are four N's. Pick up that barbecue worth almost 4000 $4,000. Uh, you have no cash. Uh, you only have a barbecue. So spin the wheel. 300. D. There are three Ds. Now you have some cash in addition to the barbecue. I'd like to buy a vowel, at, please. Sure. A. There are three A's. Yeah. <laughs> Down to 650, Ron. Jackpot's almost 6,500. Three hundred. G. No. Will, your turn. Nine. Y. Uh huh. One Y. Oh, no. Get you out of there. Oh man. Oh, no. Will, I'm sorry. That was a bad time for that. Linda, it's your okay. turn. Come on, Will. Big money. Big money. L. Yeah, there's one L. Big money. There Come you on. Go. Big, big money. Big money. Big money. Okay. 550. R. Mm -hmm. One R. Want to go again? It's up to you. You have $900. I better solve the puzzle. All right. Tony, Orlando, and Dawn. That's it. Twice on the pipe, if the answer is no. Uh, $900, we add that to your total. Your leading total now moves to $5,300. Uh, but we're not finished, gang. Hang in. The luck can't stay bad forever. We'll, we'll be back and see what happens in a minute. Stay with us. Some travel accommodations provided by Priceline.com, where you name your own price and save on airline tickets, hotel rooms, rental cars, and more. Only at Priceline.com. You know, my right arm is twice as large as my left because I have to give the wheel a final spin so many times. I'm going to do it again. Yeah! I'll ask you to give me a letter for the puzzle. I'll have three seconds to solve it. Vowels worth nothing. We had $1,000 to that, and each consonant is worth $1,600. Thing is the category. There it is. Uh, still anybody's game. And Linda, we start with you. A letter, please. T. I think so, yeah. One T. You have three seconds. Ron. D. Nope. Will? S. No S. Linda. R. Two R's. $4,800. Thing. Ron? B. Nope. Will. M. No M. R Linda? N. Nope. Ron? 
H. One H. Hourly rate. Got it. Well, a little icing on your cake. I get it. There's so much. Um, you won sixteen hundred dollars that round, and we added to your thousand you won earlier, leaving here with two thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Have a great time. I'll be back in a moment. Now, if anyone deserves some uh, sympathy here, it's old Will, who I think had a puzzle, a couple of puzzles figured out, and then the old bankrupt got him. Uh, we have some nice party gifts for you. Hope it was a good experience. We yes, enjoyed having you here. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. Hello. Hi. And you, and you said you were nervous. You were, no, you, you were kidding me. No. $5,300, a big winner. Linda, grab my hand here. Watch your step. We're going to take a long way down and talk about these prizes you could win. Uh, starting uh, with our first vehicle of the night here at our Las Vegas week. This is our Explorer, worth over $30,000. A great vehicle could be yours. And uh, we also have a boat, I'm told, and that's worth over $25,000. A beautiful vessel there, as you can see. And we have um, the Paris and Paris uh, combo. This is interesting. A great trip to Paris, France, of course. You recognize the landmarks. And then you'll be back in Las Vegas, where a recreation at the Paris Hotel will make you feel like you're back there. There's just so much going on. And what else, Charlie? You already money or anything? Well, we do. We happen to have $25,000. <laughs> you're such an announcer. <laughs> That's right, Pat. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, we'll be back. <laughs> You ready, guys? This could be the ride of your life. You gotta get past the myths. And the excuses. Erectile difficulty is a common problem. Effective treatment is available. Talk to your doctor. You might be surprised how easily you can get through it. Watch for the SoapCity.com sweepstakes all next week. You could win a trip to Hollywood and a visit to a soap opera set. Log on to WheelOfFortune.com for all the details. Brought to you by eHarlequin.com. You ready for this? I guess so. Okay, well, I, we have to do it. Oh, okay. Uh, what do we do first? I forgot. Oh, you pick a letter, yeah. All right. <laughs> I have these blackouts occasionally. Me too. They're more frequent. I'm not sure if I should be concerned about them. Uh, remember, the answer must be in the form of a question. No. Uh, on the map, that is the category tonight. R S T L N E. Start with those letters. All right, now we need three more consonants and a vowel. C. It's one. D. Two. M. And a vowel. A. All right, you're going to get just one letter, oh, but you okay. can do this. You can remember the category is on the map. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, you can solve this thing. All right, you have ten seconds. Talk it out. Good luck. To Dublin. Yeah. Oh my! I told you. You got to listen to me. Thanks. That was easy, right, Dublin? Sure. Absolutely, and you've got yourself an explorer. Oh, <laughs> From Ford comes the 2000 Explorer XLT four-door. With its five-speed automatic overdrive transmission and ample space for four people, it will take you wherever you want to go in comfort. From Bergie Motor Company, $30,265. Hey, I think someone's coming. I hear the dinner powder. Hey, what's this high bid stuff? Hi, Gary, how are you? I take it this is uh, the mystery you were speaking so yes, kindly of. Congratulations. Uh, $35,565. Oh, give the babe another hug. What do you think? What is that? Yeah, babe. I knew you could do it. In New York, staff accommodations were provided by the Hilton Fort Lee, New Jersey. Featuring elegant decor and fully equipped meeting rooms. The Hilton Fort Lee, New Jersey. Co yeah, we're talking about coffee. You had some chocolate-covered coffee like beans or something. I, I thought they were... Something. See, I'm one of those... I don't like coffee. I don't even like the smell of coffee. I can't even go to the bookstores now. You can't find a bookstore that doesn't have a coffee thing going, you know? So you never drink coffee? No, so I had one of these beans, and it's... And I, you thought you know, it was something I else? I thought it was like a raisin. Sorry. But, well, I'm sorry, too, and I feel as if I'm, I'm reeking of coffee here. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> Soon you'll be running around the studio. But I'm not putting down coffee. I think you should drink six to eight cups every day. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with more Wheel of Fortune. So long. Goodbye.
Promotional consideration provided by Armatron. Diamond watches have never been so affordable. The now Diamond Watch Collection by Armatron. Superb quality, outstanding design, and exceptional value. Armatron. Diamonds now and forever. And... Hey, with all you have going on, who has time to clean? Call Mary Maids. It's one less thing to worry about. Your teeth can be dramatically whiter in just four weeks. Dazzling White from Rembrandt. A beautiful, whiter smile. Safely. Dazzling White toothpaste. It's proven. Inside every Hot Pockets ham and cheese are slices of tender smoked ham, real cheddar cheese, and a crispy, crusty, tender, flaky crust. What are you gonna pick? Hot Pockets. Enterprise? My car's out of commission. Enterprise will pick you up. This is great. Bye. And get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up.